Okay, hearing none. And we'll move on to our first agenda item, which is the working on the budget. This is our informational meeting for the budget. Um, at the last meeting, we we looked at a majority of the budget. Um, two meetings before that, we looked at the revenue. And this past past meeting, we had looked at a majority of the departments. Uh, and we had we'd given some feedback, you know, some early feedback um, overall in the budget. So. Um, so I guess we could just start first um, on the revenue piece of it. Um, I don't know if we have to go through any of the line items unless somebody questions it. But the overall, overall the revenue, um, overall the local revenues, um, it's one of the first two pages. Yeah, it's in packet one. I had to do it in two because I didn't like the legal so I did change, um, Chris, we talked about the, on the last part of the property taxes, I did lower it from 45,000 to 40. We talked about going down five every year, so I did do that. And then for penalty and interest, I did the two year average. I did less than that. You can see what it has been actually in the right hand side, but I did put that down because we talked about wanting to make sure that the revenues were um, not overinflated. So I did um, make those adjustments. So overall, the revenues year over year is about 13, a 38,000 increase. Mm -hmm. What we're anticipating, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Therese, is any of that delinquent tax, is that based off, I know you, over the last two years, you've been setting a lot of payment plans mm -hmm. folks. Is any of that based on that and then sort of an assumed additional amount, or how are you getting to that number? Basically, I just, I keep looking at what we've put into that line item in the past few years, how it comes in. And even if you got all, and we still have some delinquencies, we know that we're on a payment plan, and if they hadn't adhered to their payment plan, they'll sell the next, we'll put them up in this tax sale. We do have, um, you know, several we know that we sold, that redeemed, or, or I have a couple that have redeemed, but I just look at what has been in there, you know, from the past couple of years, and that's how I based on it, only a two-year average, because well, there's a lot, you have delinquent taxes, even if you get a lot of the back years caught up, because the minute that someone doesn't make their May 15th payment, <clears throat> or their November 15th, we consider them delinquent. They're not technically, uh, the, you know, the, until like until we charge them the penalty, which is May 15th. But you always have people that have missed, you know, the payment or missed the May payment, even if it's by a week or two. So I have been trying base the average on a couple of years of our history instead of going way back. You always are going to have some sort of number there, but I think that they're good numbers. And, and so you may have somebody miss their payment by a week, uh -huh. <clears throat> which is still it good, but technically right. wouldn't go down as right towards the 40,000 of delinquent, but it definitely would go towards the penalty and interest piece because right. by law, you know, if you miss it by one day, you get charged penalties and interest. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and too, it depends, you know, when people are starting to pay off on their payment plans. And mm -hmm. so I just did the actual, but I just based it on two years and we had agreed to drop the delinquent taxes prior by 5,000 a year. So I'm just sticking with that. And then obviously the two year average for interest is higher than what I budgeted and penalty is higher than what I budgeted, but. No, my I mean, hope is we're continued efforts, we're going to see those numbers come down. So I mm -hmm. think they're realistic and I don't feel like the budget is, you know, overinflated. And in a perfect world, the delinquent tax would be zero. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. So we have to, you know, when, I don't know, about three years ago, I think we were, we were, three or four years ago, we were budgeting like $75,000 a year on delinquent mm -hmm. taxes. But at some point what you're doing is you're kind of almost double dipping your revenue source from kind of one year to the other, because if you're collecting 75,000 delinquent taxes, that means that you didn't collect 75,000, you know, at some other point that was in your budget. So, mm -hmm. so we, want to, we want to start moving that revenue scale down because all of a sudden it will never happen, not gonna win, but if let's say in theory, every single person came in tomorrow and paid off all their debt, Right, yeah. our budget is <coughs> off forty thousand dollars <coughs> because everybody paid their paid it off. So our we budget, just, yeah. our budget would be off by two cents. Right, you know, because you were anticipating that as a revenue source, but all that back would go towards 
this budget, not next budget, you know? Yeah. And the so, stuff you don't see in here is like, you know, when you get, you know, fire department grants or, you know, obviously we don't know what we're going to get in the upcoming year, so I don't budget for any of that, but that usually just offsets an expense anyway, so sometimes, you know, I know uh, the fire chief gets a little wigged out because his budget looks like he's overspent, but he really hasn't because if you look at his expenses, he has revenue to offset, you know, that because he's usually really good at getting grants, so. Fire chief um, complaining about yeah, he does. He complains. Well, it makes it, every year in the back four, it makes it look like we went way over. I'm, yeah, and that's why we... It's not a line to track and all the right. the stuff I, that we got grants for. We just put, I think last year when I did it, I put a note beside it saying this expense was offset by a... At least we did in the draft, but we'll make sure it goes in this year. But I think it did last year. It it does, but you know, you know, people don't always do that. They just look at Dave's page and say, oh, we overspent, when they're mm -hmm. not going to look at the revenues. So overall, right now, the budget we're looking at, the revenue source would be $38,000 increase over last year. Um, yeah. And there's a little bit of an increase in highway revenues, um, state only. I mean, some of it's just little, you know, that we put in there. Um, I'm gonna see. Do, uh, the tower release line? Mm-hmm. Now, what kind of a deal did we sign on that, um, leasing that tower? Is that something we did with the state or the... It's a local deal. Because yeah. I know that everybody else who has a tower, they put another antenna on, they get more money. Yeah, well, but not this one. I um, I'm not even sure. Let's let go Does down this that tower lease have worms. something to do with you, Dave? Is this where... No, it's not where you guys get... Let's not revisit out. this can of worms. Oh, okay. Please. This is the whole other thing. All right. Yeah. Is there any uh, revenue from what the council is bringing in for us for the? Yeah. yeah. There's a line in there for ticket Where? traffic tickets. Traffic tickets. Yeah. It's under state and federal okay. revenue. Yeah. And I didn't put a lot in there because a I haven't seen any revenues. Um, he's written tickets, but I have to call the judiciary because I haven't got any money yet since July. So I I don't know what's going on there. And um, and then with him taking a full time position. I don't know what his future is, so I'm just, you know, whatever we make over there will be gravy. Right? But you only get a small percentage of the ticket anyway. Right, so anyways, but if he's, you know, you know going gang, hundred dollar ticket, so I just don't know. Fifty yeah. dollars or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. no doubt. Yeah, mm. absolutely. He's certainly been quite active anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Which, yeah. And Probably land use some. was a good increase this year. Um, you can see that, and then I did increase penalty and interest just because we've been collecting it. So I tried to make that reflect, reflect the actual budget, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, <coughs> any questions on the revenue side? <coughs> oh, the reimbursement for the water department? Yep. How do you figure that number there? The, water, the sewer department stays the same, but the water department went up. I, the admin reimbursed? Yeah. Yep, what I do is I take a percentage of people's salaries I figure out, you know, talk about how many hours I think it takes them to do whatever the services that they provide that department and go from there. So this year I, I, I think I tweaked the um, mine that because I, was it last, it might have been last year or the year before, Greg, Greg and I talked about it in because we didn't put any of our salaries any of mine, or only a small percentage of mine, and none of the town managers, that's how it worked. We didn't put any of Greg's salary in there. Mm -hmm. So I haven't spent a lot of time with the water. So we just changed the percentages this year. I just tweaked mm -hmm. in a little bit. Try to make sure they're realistic and, mm -hmm. and what, mm -hmm. because of what we're doing, so. All right, and that green maple true up, what's? That we get every, once in a while, what happens is we have a, the um, solar agreement mm -hmm. with green maple and, um, they have to every year by the contract. They're supposed to do this true up to see how much if they owe us any money or we owe them how it's worked out. And hmm. so we got a significant check from them this year. So, okay. and do we is there something in here for the compensation for the solar field at the transfer station? Yes, at the bottom. Yeah, yeah the green, green, green lantern lease green at the bottom green green of green miscellaneous. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Right in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, right. But the three maple true up, I just don't know, obviously, when if we're going to get that every year, how that works, so I don't budget for it. We just have to just receive it. Okay. 
Further discussion? Revenue end? Okay. And we'll dig into the budget side of things. The um, We can just go in order. The public works is the first spot in line, so we talked about it a little bit last time. Um, Teresa just wanted to just take us through the the theory behind? Yeah, so I don't think I changed too much after um, after our last meeting. Um, you can see I tried to put some notes in so you can see what I'm doing. And um, I know I did tweak the insurance rates because I had just got an insurance bill, so I was able to, um, they had some decreases in their rates, so I was able to work that out this time. So Health insurance? Insurance building and, uh, oh, work, yeah, that workers comp building and liability. So, you know, so a lot of this is pretty much what it was last year. Um, you know, all the same expenses, no new line items until you get to hire services or equipment. And we added a line item for ditching of $20,000, like we talked about. Um, so we're gonna, and we're also going back to outsourcing roadside mowing, ditching, and we finally put a budget a number in there, five grand for tree cutting. Because sometimes Alan has to call someone. There's, there's a big tree that they cannot take care of. Um, and he needs to hire it out, it's not cheap. So that, you know, hopefully by the end in the spring, we'll be able to go around and the guys will know all their roots. So if they have any trees to be cut, Alan can look. And then if we have a few that we could do, we could put them together in a package and bid it out. So we could get, <clears throat> deal with a couple things at once. So Trace, the ditching number there, mm -hmm. what's that based on? Oh. Honestly, I started with how much. Starting could, something, just starting to get some money. Yeah, we just tried to figure out how much we could support in the budget. And um, we were figuring that we bid it out by the foot. And I think Chris had done the math and thinking that would get us what? Was it two <clears throat> weeks, three weeks of? Yeah, it's about three weeks worth three of weeks. work. Yeah. Of course, it all depends on, you know, the year and what road you want to do. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're just going to ditch and, and have, um, you know, a grass ditch, then you can get a lot of mileage out of 20,000. But if, let's say, you have a stretch of road that you're going to have to put some stone in or something like that, then you know you may only may only get a week's worth of ditch and have to pay for material, you know, stone lining ditches or something like that. So, kind of looking through it, I, you know, 20,000 seems to be um, kind of a starting point. I don't think it's an end-all point on no. if you you know if you keep everything in a cycle and maintenance mm -hmm. everything but you know we also have to you know we have to comply with the new stormwater um, mm -hmm. yep, pieces yep. that um, that we naturally are going to have to mm -hmm. um, put some money into like we know um, we have a lot of ditching on camper we know that well probably initially you're going to have hot spots that you're going to want to jump on first mm -hmm. yeah you know and then uh, maybe ne next year it might be a little different we'll the see. idea is to kind of get a game plan a road map and say okay i want to whatever i want to ditch four miles mm -hmm. you know on these three roads or let's say and then we put it out to bid by the foot because you know, if you put it out by the hour, one excavator operator might be a little higher on the price, but might be a lot faster, and you might have someone that's lower on the price that's a lot slower. So, mm -hmm. if you bid it by the foot, you can, mm -hmm. and yeah. then use our own trucks to haul away any. Well, any yeah, waste. we'll be continuing to do ditching. Well, we don't part really, of our regular maintenance. We, we don't really have a piece of equipment that does ditching that isn't yeah. super slow. We don't yeah. have anything that does it that's that makes it you know cost worthy. So we. What we're doing is by putting it out, uh, it's even better than rent. We talked about renting or leasing a machine, but by the time we put one of our guys in it and there's a learning curve, it's just easier to do this. I mean, also, we'll, too, because don't forget, we've also had put just a seasonal worker in there, and, and so there, there's a person not in the budget. And, and there's, you know, there's a lot of times, on, you know, on a lot of roads that we can do temporary greater, you know, mm -hmm. ditches right. that work really well, you know, if you have to cut it once a year, twice a year. Um, you know, in some of those areas that might be not big problem areas that you can just go up and cut the greater ditch in. But then there's other areas that you, know, you might have to go out to whatever, Louisville and, and do yeah. some, um, you know, stone mining or something like that. So there's money. The other thing we added was guardrail, and then we did have a conversation. I did with, um, with oh. Ryan Slack. Sounds like he's sliding too. <laughs> 
with Ryan Slack after the meeting, and he did say that he had some guardrail that they can't use the state because it's not necessarily good for, you know, highway. I mean, an interstate has a different need than we would need on a back road. So I did tell Alan that, that he has some material there that he might be able to, you know, give to us if we need it. So, and again, I think it's just kind of somewhere with a number. You know, when we set out a year or two ago of, you know, to be able to control our budget, we need to understand it. And, you know, and to be able to kind of understand our budget, we need to have different phases that we can tie money to. And in the past, it's been a catch-all, you know, all the money, you know, when you, they didn't code anything. It just all of a sudden became, oh, well, you spent, you know, $100,000 on that, you know. Um, and I think breaking it down, then we can kind of track that and say, you know, maybe next year we say, geez, you know, twenty thousand dollars for ditching it really only costs us twelve, so we can adjust that. You know, that's the right number, and we can kind of move with that. Or, or we might find out that hey, we got a lot more guardrails need to be fixed, or you know, that's right. put a little money on that or something. But there's so many of these, uh, you know, catch-all. You know, in the past, I don't think we even know how much we were spending for guardrail or sweeping or tree cutting or you know. Yeah, well, at least if we can kind of phase these together. We... Exactly. And the other thing in here, too, as we talked about, is we added the $35,000 for bridge repair, which we know is not going to really repair a big bridge. My hope is that we can level that, that that could be our match on a bigger structures grant. Mm. Um, we did talk a little bit about, um, and Alan and I talked about watershed and, um, you know, maybe just removing that bridge and, and dead-ending that road so it doesn't connect into Camp Brook because that has a wing wall, has an issue there. I asked the fire chief if that was a problem for him, and honestly, we have a turnaround there. We need a turnaround, yeah. That's because I can tell you from FEMA is, you know, I was, when I put the budget together, I read the um, bridge inspections, all of them, for our bridges that we have to maintain. And that's one thing that FEMA does, too. I know I've heard people say, oh, you know, we're gonna flood, and that bridge will come out. That bridge comes out, and FEMA's gonna look at that report, and they're gonna be like, yeah, we're not gonna give you a dime, because you did not maintain it. So, you know, there's, bridge, you know, they say, there's no That bridge didn't come out for, through Irene either. I mean, it, no, but it offset that the wing wall is. Yeah. And, and, then we have, yeah. and then we have several bridges that aren't structurally defective, but right. have maintenance work that needs to yeah. be done to it. Yeah, yeah they might need to be power washed. And, 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 and some of that. Over needs special. Right? And some of that work yeah. is something that the Public Works Department can do rather than having to outsource it. I mean, Absolutely. If, if they, they need to do some pressure washing or. Yeah. or Fixing some decking or repairing some guardrail or something, we can do that in house rather than mm -hmm. exactly uh, rather than wait for it to really go bad. And yeah. then mm -hmm. the other thing too here is, and you know, if you look at the public works budget, it's it's up twelve percent. But let's just say that one hundred and eighteen thousand in here is to pay our ERAF. So that is our twelve point five percent of all of the damage, not including Pinello or Peavine. But that's a you know that's a good number, and and we got a lot of work done on those roads, and and we. You know, for 118,000. So does that have to be paid off all in a, in a certain time period or by yep. a certain date, and whatnot? Yep, they're going to. Yeah. It does. I mean, because next year we're going to because a we're not going to borrow anything for it. We signed that 1.4 million dollar note, and so we have to pay it off because what happens is we're paying. You know, we're going to get. We started to already get some reimbursement back. Um, I tried to take a draw off from the line of credit, basically to cover Camp Brook, and that money has already been, I put that in, we should be hearing, I've already heard back, so they've submitted it, so we should be getting our money back. That's 600, but, but, do you, but you have to, you don't have time to, you have to pay it off, so yeah, you have to. I mean, we don't have to pay it off in one year. I mean, we could take yeah. the 180000 and take a note out and pay it over yeah. four years if we wanted to. But, the only thing we have to be careful of is, like we have 118,000 this year, we still have three plus projects that are open that need to be done next year mm -hmm. that could be just as much, you know? Yeah. So if we don't start paying this off, we could have payments for four or five years yeah. at, you know, yeah. 40 year, you know. Exactly. The other um, thing that's in here too is the livery stable Avon, you know, storm drain payment of 41,537 and that's, and um, I did, uh, Tim Mills and um, Dimitri, myself, we were talking to Wayne, or no, Mike Maynard from Aldrichan Elliott. And, we're, and I talked to Rita at Two Rivers today, she's back. So um, we're working on writing a grant for the Better Back Roads 
or the, you know, they don't call it better records anymore. Now it's just better roads, excuse me. So, but we, if we get award, if we are winners of the grant, we can get $20,000. So, you know, better than a shark stick in the eye. So I'm gonna see a better budget from Mike. Um, he's gonna submit something for us for the grant. So that could be, so I mean, I think that if you look at the budget, where we're saying it's up, this budget would be down if it wasn't for, you know, paying off the ERAF and the livery stable Avon storm drain. And I did put the pictures in there again for you to go over that. And so I was mistaken. So it's not, it's adding new drop inlets and adding new um, pipe. It is not upgrading old, it's, it's installing new. So I drew on the pictures so that you could see that. Um, so it's gonna be torn off anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, we are going to have to go over a little ways, you know, further, but yeah, that's it, you know, and right now that water is just coming down into Main Street, it's filling those drain, you know, storm drains, and then it's just running into the river anyway, so it's something that the state is obviously trying to get you to avoid, so it's one of those things, you're in there, and kind of made sense to pick it up, so I, I mean, did have I a think question. the only thing that bugs <laughs> me about the storm drains is, I mean, I'm all for thinking ahead and doing things mm -hmm. and and taking advantage of well it's open but I, I think things that's on my mind is one the hundred and ninety thousand is kind of a nobody really knows what that number is. Well you I'm know, getting a uh, better I will have a and, budget from like um because I needed one for the grant. So he was gonna give me some more information. We just had you know because they were so busy designing the water system that you know and obviously if we don't use it we won't spend it. There's, you know, it's not like we're going to use this line item on something else. If it, if we, if we don't, if the grant or if the work comes in less than that, then, then, you know. But my, my whole thing is just, you know, right now with what we have in town that we, you know, we just retired long-term debt mm -hmm. that we're going to be carrying for a very long time at yeah. 80 some odd thousand a year. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we have the ERAF that we're bearing this year. We're going to have another ERAF next year mm -hmm. and, you know. I know that the storm drains probably should get done, but yeah. we can't fix everything in True. this year or next year. You know, uh, it, you know, it's a harder pill to swallow when we're talking, you know, five-year payment. You know, I know. If this it was a, it you know, if it was a, hey, it's going to be forty-five thousand one year. I mean, oh, that, sure. that's a no-brainer. But now you're thinking you got forty maybe $41,000 for the next five years. We have an ERAF coming next year that, mm -hmm. will we be able to bury it in the budget next year or will we have to pay that out over so many years? And then we have the long-term debt we're paying on, mm -hmm. plus we're gonna have the, you know, even though it's not tax related, it's gonna be a utility, you know, the water increase mm -hmm. um, for that work, so. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. I mean, it just, it, to me, it, you know, obviously it makes sense to all of us in our logical brain because we're going to be there and have the road open and all that. But I also understand the monetary aspect of it. Well, I don't we, think that right now we're looking at a bad budget, but I also will know, possibly know a little bit more before the next budget meeting too, because I'll have a bet, you know, something from Mike. And we cut the project too. It was Livery, Avon, Densmore, and one other anyway so we cut it to so um but I, I i mean my whole thing is just it's not 190,000 estimate right um now what is that versus i mean 190,000 if if that number was correct on the mm -hmm. dot 190,000 while we have it ripped open mm -hmm. but how much is it if we don't have it ripped open is it 300,000 or is it oh, right. 200,000 you know i mean yeah. what is the benefit for us to go through and ask the town's people for another two cents on the tax rate to put this in. Mm -hmm. How much is it worth it to do it now right. versus? I think for and without us, having that information, I'm, I, I'm just not sold on it. That's well, I, I'm not sure I can give that information right now because they're still pushing hard to get our drawings are at ninety percent. So the engineer is working really hard to get the drawings done. So it may be a question that right. I can't answer for you. Because of course I'm assuming that if we're yeah. mobilized, people are mobilized, you know, that we're gonna do better. But what the difference would be between now and then, I I can't answer. Because I, I don't think I we're gonna get an accurate answer between now and I don't know going to the, the voters on it. Right. I don't know what I'm gonna find out between, you know, I'm gonna find out from Mike this week because the grant application, if we move forward with it, Okay. If we move forward with it, the grant application 
is due on Friday. So, you know, it's one of those things I don't want to jump through all the hoops and do it and then not move forward with it either. So, I, I know it's not a perfect solution. It's just uh, something to think about while we're there. But anyways, so, um, so yeah, so that is in here. Um, the question I did have for you, all of you, was, and uh, maybe Ellie can answer this, my understanding with the rec I'm putting in the skate park is that the select board had allotted $50,000 for the rec, um, you know, out of the money to put in the skate park, out of the fund, but then the town reg promised $20,000 in kind. So I had been under the impression the whole time that the in kind was equipment and labor. But is that materials as well? Because if that's materials, no, we didn't put no, that it's, in the budget. It's excavating and, and it's not materials. It's not, okay, because that was, I it's just want to make sure, because I had some budget. It's the excavation and the. Um, so it's just equipment and manpower. Yeah. Because someone had said that it included materials. And, our, and I was like, oh boy, we did not budget for materials. So I just wanted to make sure if we had promised you that, that we put it in here so that we could deliver. As far as I remember, because it was, um, it was the in kind was set up with um, key originally. Okay. And, and, and um, when it was, um, okay. it was it. So, um, but, so I'll double just, check on that, but, but yeah, because that's a. Yeah. Do you remember the word? Was it? Do you think that it was just? It was just helping out with some of the site work. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it yeah. necessarily was us going in there with an excavator, yeah. but yeah. it was more, right. you know, was, putting our trucks on, hauling material out, yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. But they had hauled, they had given a number of twenty grand, but I so I, I wasn't. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was just, just, but I, I mean, that was the <coughs> first placeholder, first budget. Mm -hmm. 150 revisions ago, so yeah, right. you know, exactly. is 20,000 okay. really 8,000 now, or right. what, what is that? Now? Well, I just want to be sure. Five years, inflation could be a lot more. That's right. I just but that was based sure. on a project of $80,000. Right. So yeah. Well, I just want to make sure, there. because we were putting the budget together and they included materials. I had not done that, so I wanted to make sure nope, we were shouldn't all set. Yeah. But <clears throat> Alan is obviously here, so I don't know if you have any specific questions for Alan, because I don't know if he needs to be out on his route. Or... The, the other thing I just want to, I don't not necessarily want to adjust it right now, but just we'll come back to it later. But So I took, I took the mileage of gravel roads that we have, and I've been doing some research on how often, how often you should add select material to, to your roadbed surface which seemed to be about a five year cycle um, on adding, I mean, granted there's some roads that we have that haven't had material on it in a decade or two. Um, but corrective, it, it seems like about every five or six years we should be adding some select material to that. So I went through some calculations on mileage and you know, if you put down you know, anywhere from two to four inches at a time um, and then kind of backtracked it with today's figures on how much a load of um, stone goes for. Um, I came up with about 45,000 on the gravel budget <clears throat> to keep things maintained on a five year cycle. Um, and, and so I, I kind of went back through a bunch of um, town reports and I found back in um, back in the early 2010s um, we used to have a gravel budget of like $20,000 in the town. And then we had one year that we increased the gravel substantially um, to um, 36, 40,000. And then we kind of never brought it back down. It was supposed to be kind of a hump to do a big charge of roads and then we'd go back, you know, it was a catch up. But, we, but we've kept that budget at 36,000 for some time now and never made any adjustments on it. But, um, and, and I know that we increased the gravel budget to 60, mm -hmm. mainly on a, we do have roads, as we saw, that need select material, because we're just, you know, we're grading, <laughs> yeah, we're grading, yeah. you know, round cobblestones and, mm -hmm. and uh, silt. But, um, but I think that there's room to move that down, you know, it would still be an increase, it'd be an increase of $9,000 from 
previous years on the gravel and would keep us in that five or six year cycle if we, if we did it correctly every year. Um, so just something to think about when we're at the... So what's the number you're thinking? I had uh, 45,000 is instead of 60, which would be an increase of 9,000 over. Our, our actuals have been a lot under 36 too, so we are, we're not putting on the gravel that we said we were. Well, like we'll see, I think we haven't been putting the gravel to the roads like we yeah. should have. I think you'll see in the budget that we're in currently, we've been spending a lot more gravel because we've been doing more flood well, repairs. Well, we stuff. also had the gravel pit over on Sand Hill there for. He had some cheaper for, gravel for, for a few, while too. For a few yeah. Years. yeah. Yeah. So that was cheap gravel. Well, if they'd have followed the uh, plan that we set up in the 80s of a 10 year road plan, we wouldn't have this problem now, would we? Mm -hmm. So, well, I think there was, you know, I think there was looking back, there was either years that um, either we had a, a very cheap source. Um, or we didn't, or we weren't doing what we were budgeting for. And at that time, there was hauling gravel out of uh, the pit here and then the one up in Lilybrook. Mm. So the other thing, too, is in that gravel budget is the fact that Alan is sitting on a bunch of material from um, that we had came out from under Line Bridge as yep. well as the pavement that came out of uh, from Camp Road, which needs to be crushed. Yep, do some crushing. Yep. So that and then also. The outer berm of asphalt as well that I inherited. Yep. So I'd like to get all that crushed as well. Yeah. And do you but you could throw that in with that. I mean, it's... Well, that's what I'm saying, that that was part of the 60000 is also to pay, you know, McCullough or whoever to come in and crush all that material, too. And yeah, I but don't you, know what that is. If you crush... It, well, I see what you're saying. If you crush that, that right? but your, your costs are going to be like a third of what you normally would purchase it for. Right. You know, if McCullough comes in and crushes it for a three fifty a yard, you know, that's... Mm -hmm. You know, that's six to eight dollars a yard cheaper than you're going to buy it from somebody right so I then you're going to be able to think and buy that's more material that you're yeah. going to be able to and i think some of it too the is um alan was saying right that the some of the stone that you got from under river uh uh lime bridge you were bridge. thinking about to blend make out with my winter blend sand. out to the sand so we have Fresh a little more grit in his my sand add that river stuff to my sand pile asphalt i would blend in with a you know a hard pack yeah. for my car to use or wherever and so some of it will help stretch other things too. So, but, but um, so that is something just so you're aware that that was in there as well as crushing all that old material. Plus, you know, yeah. not, if he crushes a lot of that into stuff to mix with the sand, that's not going to get him gravel for the road. You know, not going to give him what he needs. So we're still going to need. He's going to need crushing and some, um, and to purchase gravel too. So um, that's just something that Al and I had talked about today. Wanted to just remind everybody. Chris, on that forty-five thousand that you were talking about for the reduction and stuff, does that uh, for research into the roads and stuff? Are we talking about just doing one road? At, you know, at, at a period of a time, or are we talking about using some on this road and some on that road? I just took I just took the the uh, mileage of gravel roads that we have in the town, and I just figured it on an average of eighteen feet wide. So if you if you have this many miles of road, and this is how many tons or yards per mile it takes you to do it in, a, you know, in the cycle, and then back that out on how much it costs us currently to purchase material locally, and then, you know, divide that by five, and, you know, that's kind of how I came up with my number. Um, but, I mean, there's going to be some cases like us having some material up there, and if we bring in a crusher, Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to cost us upfront money to bring the crusher in, but in the long run, that's going to save us. It's going to save us sixty run. cents on the dollar. Yeah, no. So you your budget it. shouldn't go up just to crush; it should actually, right. in some cases, go slightly down. Right. And um, but we reason I, I mean I had just pulled this number out of the air. I didn't grab the number because we had been talking about. You know, I've driven every road at this point in, in Bethel, so we were talking about the fact that we had graded down to the nub and that we needed oh, yeah. material. So. But again, we got to get mm -hmm. on a. You know, we got to oh, get on that five, six year cycle because I mean, we can't afford to do them all next year. I mean, no, it's just I, not and the I way it's going to go. And we know that there's going to be You know, 30 years ago, it was yeah. a 10 year cycle. And yeah. Mo had a good, yeah, absolutely. He's right. Yeah. So, um, so that's why I just wanted to. I'm just, I just want, you know, just get it out there that there is the opportunity there yeah. once we're looking through the budget if we yeah. need to, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. take a little away. There, there, that's an option. Right. And then just to highlight in the budget, so normally we have the 30,000 under the cemeteries. Normally we have the 30,000 in there, which is for the most part just 
you know, maintenancing the cemeteries. It's not doing anything else other than cut the grass and a couple other small things. But there is some, some one-time um, maintenances that need to happen that we have included in here, which was, there was 5,000 for the fence in Fairview. And then it says five on here, but it's 15. Well, it was gonna be, but I oh. spoke to- um, And then 5,000 for the, towards oh, building some of the yeah, walls back on the cherry hill. In, and I double checked with okay. him. And he said, hey, you know what, Therese, we only need five for the fence and five people's because he had met with them and gone over the price to redo the cherry hill. And he's like, I don't need to redo the whole wall. I just need pieces of it. So mm -hmm. we felt mm -hmm. it would be, the additional 10 would be. Right. So there's a $10,000 increase over so, years past just mm -hmm. to do some of those one, one time mm -hmm. fixes. And so that was a savings of 5,000 from last week when, or two weeks ago when we looked at it. And um, so that's in there as well. But so it was a reduction, which is nice. Yeah. Um, as you can see, the backhoe and the international are paid off, so I just increased the money to put it back into the Highway Equipment Trust Fund, which is where it needs to be. So yeah. that's not a change. So, um, so that's, uh, you know, with the numbers we have in there, it's a 12.7% increase over last year. But if you take out the, if you don't do livery stable or... If you take out the, well, even if you take out just the ERAP, it's... It would be under last oh, year. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. So um, that's where. I, but Alan is here, so if you have any specific questions about anything, now is the time to well, ask. Well, Alan, Alan on the, the equipment, uh, we talked. You know, we went through the process of talking about a truck and decided to put some money at the repairs on the existing. How's that? Is that uh, those repairs completed? Everything's been done. Been done. Other than the uh, spreader for the one ton. Waiting on part. So. Did we get an estimate on what the grader back in? Still waiting for a guy to come down from uh, Nortrax for oil samples. And that's kind of how they judge the value of the, not only visually how it looks, rust and whatnot and beat up, but they also do the oil samples to see internally hydraulics, how good, mm -hmm. if there's metal shavings, it kind of gives them an idea of the wear mm -hmm. on the machines. So. Yeah. And so once Still we waiting on this guy, Liam. He's supposed to be coming down maybe this week. I'm over. So once he comes down, we'll have a little more information. And I have, as I said before, I have a few people that are volunteered to be on equipment committee. So we're gonna do that, hoping that maybe Mo will be the select board liaison. And then um, that way the purchases will go in front of a committee and kind of get hashed out before they come to the select board to be blessed. Um, so that's, so we're just waiting before, I'm not gonna call the committee together to get everybody together until we know what the answer is about that. And then we're gonna go from there and kind of work with them with the existing uh, capital equipment plan, try to see what we can tweak and what's what. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else for now on the public works? I mean, we can, at the end, we can talk about any of the items once we get yeah. through the whole budget. And yeah, first. absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's fine, so. so next up we had fire department. So I did make a change to the fire department budget between the, <coughs> this week and between now and a couple weeks ago, which I had done payroll, which I hadn't yet done for the fire department. So I needed to, I had put 25,000 in there, but after doing the payroll, I was able to lower it to 20,000. So it's only an increase of 2.26 over last year. And you know, I know I can see the history here and that we haven't always um, hit the wage number that we have budgeted for, but you have to remember, you know, we have no say over what you're going to get for calls, you know, what their call volume is. It could be up, you know, and then that's the thing about budgeting for 18 months out. I caution everybody not to cut everything. You can't cut everything to the nub because if something goes wrong and our crystal ball's cloudy, then we don't have any place to get the money from. So that's why I dropped it from 25 to 20. That seemed to be in line with what he had done in the past and um, the payroll this time was under 18 or it was about 18,000 so um, so you can see that uh, we've made some uh, Dave's made some deals here he's you know Comcast is coming in and they're gonna get a free phone line um, there's some new uh, we need they need to update some radios some pagers uh, a new fire program for their software because they have to be reporting to, to NEFERS, right? Because uh, in order to be in compliance, 
they have to report to NEPERS and it also with their FEMA, you know, grant because, um, and, and we also have um, a grant match in here for FEMA grant match because um, we're doing another one and applying for $100,000 for compressor and the cascade system. So they were successful last time, you know, Gary was and ended up bringing in a lot of, a lot of, um, like would spend like less than six grand and you got a hundred and some odd thousand dollars, Dave, worth of equipment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think I've tried, you know, gone through and explained with you here, you can see what all the percentages are and, and, um. So Teresa on the heat. Mm -hmm. So is, is that just the low number of 221 is just because we've started the heating? Yeah, season. Just, just, yep, exactly. Cut the heat off for balancing budget there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Dave probably does keep the heat off over there Bring as much sweater. as he can. <laughs> yeah. The good just thing put about, your jacket on, you'll be fine. That's right. The fire department, yeah. too, has radiant heat, yeah. which is nice. So he doesn't yeah. have those, you know, the ups floor. and downs. Yeah. It definitely, you know, yeah. kind of maintains. I know we had to have a little work done on his <clears> furnace this year. But the other thing is you'll notice is... Um, Putting in instead of the three thousand last year, putting in five thousand dollars. You know, obviously it makes sense for us to, you know, which we haven't done in the past, is maintain the buildings we have, so so he can get the backside of his building done. And I, I think that's important. A, it's important to maintain what we have. We already paid for it. And B, it's right. You know, when you come into town, it is a nice. It's a nice building to see when you come in. So <clears throat> I don't know if anybody has any. Specific questions for Dave, like I said, I do try to put some detail off to the side so you know. So I'm assuming that all the all the diesel that is used for the trucks is all under the highway department? Is that how it works? Yeah, what we okay. do is... So you don't separate out like the fire yeah, department sure. used yeah. $10,000 in diesel or something? Or yeah, no, we, we, yeah. we run a log up there okay. every time we get fuel goes onto a separate sheet for each truck. And then Trees breaks it all down. Okay. No, I just didn't yeah. see it in the budget. So yeah. I just didn't. Their fire department has their sheets. Um, town has theirs. You know. That's under gas, oil, and lubricants? Yeah. yeah. Really? They yeah. only spend $1,800 a year? Yeah. They don't spend a ton of money. They don't have a separate line for diesel. And so I bill them twice a year. Um, usually. So I would think it would be a lot higher than that. But, oh, that was it's it's I mean, heck, you just fill up one of those trucks at probably, what, 500 bucks or something? Just yeah. for a fill up. Just really? It's amazing how efficient they are nowadays. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, he, we keep track of his and the constable. So oh, I just assumed gas, oil, and lubricants was like the no. heat in that place. Chainsaws and, yeah. and stuff at the. Yeah. 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 Hmm. No, I, we are even getting all the gas through the town using the ethanol free now. Okay. I mean, one thing that we probably ought to be careful of a little bit on the diesel end of things is. Um, <clears throat> With the turn of the year, um, internationally, they're having um, the all the all the ships through. I don't know what packed it is, but all the all the big ships now are going to be burning non-sulfur fuel, um, which That's could burning now. which well they have until the first of the year, and then they switch it over to non-sulfur burning fuel for all the. Big ships, cargo ships, tankers, all that. Which, which, what that's going to do is it's going to end up creating um, a, more, a higher demand for non-sulfur fuel, which is what we burn. Um, so the likelihood is that those prices on the market are going to go up. Mm -hmm. You're probably going to see a jump in the diesel end of things. No, make one of, I'll but, make a note the but it's just something to think of. I don't know. I, I don't think anybody really knows what it's going to do. But well, it's uh, no. But it's that's good to know because I think I did increase the budget of diesel because we were at fifty eight, and then um, even though we were budgeting fifty, we were at fifty eight, and we're already at eighteen, and we had fifty four. So I'm, I'll make a note. We might want to seriously consider, you know, upping that. Just something to think of. But I mean, I was just looking through it. And, all right, that's, I'll make a little note here, but a little question. So after the that's fix in the backside of the fire station, what, what, do you have many more no, projects nothing, or? Nothing was ever done. Um, Paul knows about Windsor One. Mm -hmm. It was a product that was put out 20 something years ago that was the best thing ever made. It was prime clear pine all finger jointed together. It was an absolute failure. 
And that's what we've slowly been replacing all the trim around it with a new PVC one that will last forever, doesn't okay. rot. So. So probably after next year then? Yeah, yeah there's just the, well, the, the, the north side of the building lot to do. So are yeah. we thinking after that, will the facility maintenance be? Might go back to three. I mean, you're always going Last, or I mean, do we have a so handle on what the normal building maintenance I mean, per year was there? I where they should, a small amount, no matter what it should be, should be rolled into something. Because you may not spend it every year, but there's going to be years where, you know, you might have to replace an overhead door. Right. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, one door, and you're behind the eight ball again. Right. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's an area of, can we put a smaller amount away in the future in just, Right. I don't know how that works as far as building it into a fund. When we do have a capital building fund right now, and um, you know, which is looking at a lot of needs, it has stuff in the town hall, has to, you know, obviously we're working on the plan for the new town garage and saw shed and trying to do all those. So if you had something big, that's where we would get the money. But it makes sense to budget, you know, at least three thousand because if you needed something, you know, if you had a window broke, if you had something with a door, if you had you know, um, something like that, that, you know, you had something interior that went wrong and you need to replace a toilet or sink or, and I, I went through this building today, actually, and I think it's a good thing to do, to go through the fire station and what do you need? Does something inside need to be painted? Does it need to be, you know, we need to maintain these things. Yeah, we, had, for we put a little bit of money in the heat system this year. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the power vent finally mm -hmm. went. That's a thousand dollars, but it's been there since the station was built, so we got our money's worth out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's just important that we do, you know, routine maintenance, just like, you know, we would our homes or whatever to keep up on. So, so I think Chris probably next year, I mean, depending on what we see there, it'll, it'll probably go to three. I think it's at five this year. We didn't increase it that much, but we knew we needed to do the box. And I think, Therese, you might have told me already, but what was the change in the insurance on the equipment? We actually left, um, the fire department left the LCT and went to to VFIS, which is an insurance company that specializes for fire departments. So it ended up doing a couple of really good things for us. One is um, covers if um, you know a firefighter has an accident in their own personal vehicle, um, and it also provides them with additional coverage once their insurance company covers. It also, VLCT only pays for a portion of your fire truck. So say, um, like, Randolph. Yeah, your fire station burns down, you got three trucks in there. You don't come out as well as you think you do. You know, they have a number in mind, the ones that's been depreciated, and you either can buy one towards that or they go buy a new one, and all of a sudden you're looking at several loan payments. So the thing is with BFIS is it actually covers more of the vehicle. So it was specifically designed for fire departments, and I think it was a, it's definitely a smart choice for us to move. It gives them the coverage um, that they need. Um, for being first responders, and it also gives us better coverage on it, on the, uh, the trucks themselves. Once we decide to go that way, VLCT, they also asked us to take our workers' comp with us too, so we did that, which wasn't in Greece, but so okay. we were like, well, if you're going, take this. So the building is still covered itself by VLCT, yeah. but the apparatus and firefighters are covered better through VFIS. So okay. it ended up. Being a really good choice. So, so on the apparatus repairs and maintenance, <clears throat> yep. you got 10 5, but so far this year, nothing's going against that? No, no, start rolling in now. Yeah. Rolling Something in. that hasn't been done in the past, all the service work was done locally, and we started putting everything into a program. All the trucks now have been going, we just brought them all down to Sable and Sons for a full legitimate safety inspections mm -hmm. and um, it's the first time something like that's been done in a while through somebody that's certified so mm -hmm. we're going to start seeing a little bit of cost there but it's only a little bit now which is the way I want to see it again it's one of those things where you're great until we lose a pump or something right. a pump is ten thousand dollars you know that's always that same Pandora's box but um, we just started on the truck maintenance thing. Two of the trucks have gone down so far, and the other two will be going down. Uh, the E1 had to go back down again to get a new exhaust because it didn't meet standards or inspection. And there were some brake issues that they straightened out. So the other, the tanker and the tanker pumper are both brand new, pretty much, but they still need to be inspected every year. 
And yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. mean an inspection, <laughs> a full on safety inspection. And don't forget to we budgeted. Um, that's something that we put in the budget. And this only goes through November. I haven't updated this since the beginning of November, but the expenses. But is we had um, put in money so that their pumps could be pump tested, which is something that they had not been done in the past. And that that's a big red flag for us. We need right. to keep on top of that because he's right. If he could see it in the, in the, in the annual pump testing, if we could you know, either, I don't know, take the LHS or whoever's doing it at the time and have somebody will come over and do pump inspections for them too. So another thing is obviously these, you know, they're driving $300,000 vehicles. So, you know, we need to maintain them, especially because right now with the capital plan, I think we put together last year, we were looking at replacement on apparatus of 25 to 30 years, which is tough because especially their trucks, a lot of times they sit. And so, and some of that stuff is, you know, specialized, so it's definitely more expensive for, um, you know, some of the things to be done. And the communication part, too, that's, that's, uh, that's a mix of quite a few things. It's also our, um, we all get notified on our phones now through a program, through e-dispatch, but it's really the first time in a long, long time that the fire department's asked for any money. All the radio system we have right now, except for a few pagers, we got on grants. So the town's never really had to spend any money on communications. We've been very fortunate. But now we have, we're really getting down on pagers. And the way cell service is, as you know, we can't rely on just phones. That's what we're running into. So, um, and the same with portable radios. And interestingly, a portable radio costs almost double what a truck radio costs. But the smaller it is, the more it is. So we're trying to bump that back up a little bit to get back on track. And it's hard too because they're not, they, you used to be able to get grants for pagers and stuff like yeah, that, but they're not doing it anymore. That's pretty rare for us to do that. So, um, so that's something uh, else. The phone too. has been one of my pet peeves. Yeah. <laughs> I really struggle with it. We have. A few years ago, it wasn't that many I discovered. Our phone bill was outrageous. If you go back and look in the town report, mm -hmm. it was five, $6,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And I discovered that we were still paying for phone lines all over the town of Bethel for the red phone system that hadn't been used in decades. But we still had phone lines coming into all the buildings. So we eliminated all of that, but they still nail us on they called it dedicated line for the alarm system at the fire station. And that's almost $200 a month yeah. for a phone line. Yeah. So we're trying to work with Comcast right now. And we've decided to do away with the line in the fire station that goes, goes to our phone because we never use it. Everybody has cell phones. Nobody calls the fire station. Um, and then they're going to give us one free phone line. And we can use that for the alarm system. And then we still have to buy one more because you have to have a 234 number to call for a fire. Mm -hmm. Now, I bet it's been a decade since anybody's called that number, but the law says you still have to have it. So I'm hoping to cut the phone bill at least in half when we get through all this. So we're definitely working on it, different adjustments, and, and like I said, his budget's up just 2%, which, you know, again, it's holding another $5,000, which, um, you know, if the $5,000, if we are lucky, if they're lucky again, you know, they will have brought in over $200,000 worth of equipment for 12 grand. So, you know, it's a good situation. So that's what the five is in there for, and obviously if, if um, we're not successful with the grant, the only way that five grand would be used is for of the grant match, but they would obviously come before the board following the grant policy to, to secure that funding. So, did I read that right? The, the mm -hmm. radios are a thousand dollars a piece, portable, yeah. the pagers are five hundred dollars. <clears throat> Radio is expensive, mm -hmm. yeah. We at my company, we just <coughs> what we call them flagger radios, but just the normal, you know, they might cover. Two, three miles, and those radios are like 800 bucks a piece. That's about what these are. So yeah. Four, you know, the, the yeah, they're the expensive. Yeah. About $900. Yeah. Yeah. You're in the wrong business, you want, I mean, I bought radios yeah. when I was hunting, coyote hunting. 
that I could talk to people in Chelsea. It depends that, where you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and, but and I could talk more than two or three miles anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For 150 bucks. Well, it doesn't depend so, now. So I'm obviously, what I bought is not going to work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So our, ours are probably at a different rating. You know, you can drop it in the water, and it's not going to. It's all sealed, so it won't short out. And do you do you buy like your own frequency and stuff like that as well, or? Yeah, we we so have, you have money in there to pay right for your own. Bethel and Barnard and share a frequency. Yeah. Yes. So we have our own. Yeah. Is there? I mean, I mean, thinking out of the box, and I don't know if you can or not, but it with. With the technology that's out there, is there any opportunities to, I mean, everybody has a cell phone, everybody has certain communication devices, is there any opportunities to do away with certain pieces of a communication and, you know, like, let's, like a pager or anything, is there any way well, of doing away with pagers and going with, with, with phones? With this e-dispatches, which is the phone, yeah. that's what we tried, but it, really all it does is they enhance each other, because some places the pager works. Some places it doesn't. Right. Some of the people that just have the phone, if there's no service, they don't get the call. You know, it's it's a so it's like they complement each other. Yeah, I just didn't know if like you know, I mean, everybody pretty much has a smartphone. I mean, if you right. maybe if you offered instead of buying, a, it might not even work, but instead of buying yeah, there, there's no pagers, we give everybody a, an allowance towards their phone, you know, or something. You know, and everybody that's on the department that has a smartphone. No matter what brand does is on the e dispatches, which what that does is it tells them you know it's like getting it toned out, and they can also listen to the whole call as they're going, but you can't communicate back on it. That technology is not there. Hmm. And then the radios that we do have, they aren't a single band radio either. I mean, there's uh, right. probably seventy two channels in it, different banks, hmm. and that's where it starts to get. You know, so we go to every other town, you know, it's different frequencies. And, mm -hmm. yeah. and I know we had talked about it a little bit, I didn't see anything, I mean, it's probably hard to budget for it, but, you know, there are times that we, we do go on calls to, you know, maybe out in the interstate for a commercial truck that has jackknife. Mm -hmm. Is there, is is there any, opportunities to bill some of these? Any commercial any, accounts we bill, yeah. anything... Non-commercial, they don't pay. Mm -hmm. They don't care the insurance for And them. not only that, where I struggle with that is if you got in an accident in Randolph and the Randolph Fire Department came to help you, would you like to get a bill from the Randolph Fire Department? You know, but commercial That's enterprises. why I have insurance. We, we <laughs> have, well, but see, the insurances won't pay. No. That we've okay. never, we've tried and tried yeah. and tried, but when it comes to non-commercial, they will not, I mean, if you wanted to hire a lawyer and maybe right. dog after it, you could. But the commercial accounts, anything commercial, we have been billing yeah. and we have been very successful on that. So yeah. do we have a, because I, I, I didn't see it. In the revenue? But is there any, you know, is, no, maybe we don't so, have enough of a history or not, but it might well, be something to think about. It's so hit or miss, but what I usually you do know. is sometimes I just offset their expenses with it. So mm -hmm. if um, we, we get the money back, then I offset their salary line because right. they, we paid them to go out on the call. And um, I think last time I actually took the equipment money that came in and put it into their capital account. Okay. And, but no, we got a letter back and a phone yeah, call from the residential. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. okay. And it's all mm -hmm. set by the federal government what you can charge um, for each yeah. truck, each person. Yeah, we so tried to do there you we go. did charge the FEMA rates. But no, I just didn't know if, if we had enough data to, mm -hmm. or yeah. how we went about we counting for that. we got paid three or, times. Yeah, anything commercial, we're sent, we send mm -hmm. a, a bill yeah. out. Yeah. But that's why I do it. I just offset their expenses and then the equipment money I put in their equipment fund because okay. it's like that. Anything that further on the fire department? For now? And constable department? So we talked about the cruiser, and this is what I got. And I haven't seen Oscar in person more, for more than two minutes, so I did email him today. I don't want to see him. But it says uh, the cruiser may need a water pump and has undetermined front end issues. So he felt like we should keep it at, we should put, you know, 
some money in there, so I put three grand in, and he's been doing repairs. I know he's all set for tires, but um, that was what he said. He felt like there was some shaking in the front end. He wasn't sure what it was, um, and yeah, obviously if the water pump goes, then that's a bigger deal. So he just was trying to put the money in there. Uh, so the labor budget is still at 20 hours a week. Um, so do, um, we know, do we know what's happening with... Mm -mm. <coughs> I sent him an email today telling him that I needed to, want to know what his schedule was. I needed to see him. Um, I saw him last week for a couple minutes. I just said, you know, your future employment in Bethel hinges on your schedule. So I really need to know what you plan on doing in Royalton. So that is yeah. still undetermined at this point. Okay. I don't know. So really at this point, the only increases on the constable and things is the, is the insurance on equipment, which changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Some retirement benefits and um, uniform, and then a little bit extra for the cruiser, you know, yep. or kind of the big ticket items. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I added. So. Um, I think the only thing new was uniforms. Put five hundred dollars in there. Mm -hmm. um, increased the training budget a little bit, but on the auto insurance, I just got the bill. And so I was able to, I asked her for the breakdown, so I went back to her job. I was trying to do that each year to make sure everybody's paying their share. It looked like he was underpaying. So I reallocated some money to that. Okay. So that's really it. And But at this point, I don't know what, if, you know, the whole thing could change. It could be, goes to 10 or 12 or 15 hours a week. I don't know. Of course, the tough thing with, you know, with having any type of, any department, but, you know, when you get into the law enforcement is, you know, all the red tape and policy and procedures yeah. that you got to follow that, mm -hmm. you know, for many years that either we didn't take for account here, mm -hmm. may have been paying it anyways, but, mm -hmm. um, or now are recently coming into effect. I mean, I remember when we got rid of the Tahoe, you know, we had to update a lot of things and, you know, yeah. you can no longer have the VHF, you know, mm -hmm. recording device. It had to be digitally and, you know, this and that. And, Right. And I think we're starting to find out how expensive it is and will continue to be to have a professional. It is. A, a semi professional mm -hmm. service, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because of all the red tape that yeah. has to go through. Yeah. 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 Well, and then the other thing is, it is expensive, you're right. And, um, you know, it, it, people are surprised at. The price tags, even if you look at a small department like Randolph or or, um, or anything, oh, it is okay. expensive, and and we have been um, so yeah. And there's definitely you know, as we go, we need to work out some. However, I will policy issues and things like that. I, I mean, I will say because I've been looking around. I mean, compared to other towns of our size, our our cost to patrol our area is significantly less than most. Yeah. Um, you can look at some of our neighboring towns that are the same size or if not smaller that they pay out a lot more. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these yeah. towns like, you know, I was looking at one town that's not really much bigger than us and they have three full-time police officers and it's like, wow, you yeah. know, I mean, it's so true. I mean, I, I will say that we're doing well. I don't think we've really even changed much over the years I yeah. mean, other than, you know, things are more expensive now. Um, yeah. And the profession is something. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we had the Tahoe for, you know, I mean, we used to have the, you know, 15, 20 year old pieces of equipment, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, no different than the fire station. I mean, we used to have the, you know, the 1960 pump truck, you know. I mean, I mean, it was, you know, those are the things that. Yeah, it's true. No, you're absolutely right. It is expensive. And, and uh, but anyway, so that's the budget there. So once I see them, I'll have a little more information. Um, and then. Recreation budget was next. Um, you can see where I made a couple of changes. Um, uh, like I said, I had gone through and actually calculated the wages based on you know hours, and yeah, it might come in a little less than that, but we'll see. We also know we're going to have hard time finding lifeguards this year, so that salaries could change. Um, I did try to put some notes in here about what's what um, under. Um, you can see repairs and maintenance um that's up i tried to give you a little bit of information here that you know what we need bladders some shelving some mulch some bench materials and 
Um, so I did try to mm -hmm. put that in here a little bit. I know the programming activities, we budgeted 3,600. So you know, we're hoping to do build on those family fun Fridays that everybody mm -hmm. really liked and uh, do one in January, February, and April. Um, myself and Deidre and Lindley sat down and um, we're talking about that, how to, you know, do this. It's a beautiful hall and, and, and um, Lindley and Wiley have a beautiful space too and, you know, trying to find a way to, um, you know, get people, some more people downtown. Be nice, so. And, I mean, it, even though the budget year over year proposed budget is, <coughs> it's, it's up less than four thousand mm -hmm. dollars, but you also have to take into account on the revenue end of things. The revenue is up two thousand, so mm -hmm. you know their budget really is only up two thousand dollars. Yeah, um, and then I guess the the one thing that was open for discussion was the, um, the through the through the budgeting, the recreation department had had asked for five thousand dollars to put into the. Uh, Recreation facility fund. No, I think she actually she's standing up. I think she asked for fifteen or ten yeah, or fifteen. Yeah. Um, the committee would like to. We we are so encouraged with all the good feedback that we've gotten from the trails. People are we've done hard work there and 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 have been had such positive reinforcement that people are lo loving the trail. The first trail from the center the, to the um, to the school. So the committee would like to request fifteen thousand for the improvement fund with five thousand earmarked it to go specifically for trails. That's that's what we'd like to request for this year. I know. I had a call from Thatcher that I discussed with him. I didn't get a chance to call him back, but I need to because I had some questions for him about, um, I guess, with the trails that maybe he was running into some issues with um, Act 250. So I did email him, and then he had me. He asked me to call him, and I just, I just didn't get a chance to. I'm hoping to call him tomorrow to find out what exactly that issue is. Well, do you know the grant that? You guys are applying for right now. Yeah, um, it's, what is um, it? it's due December seventeenth. Right, and specifically for the trails, do you know the amount? No, I don't know oh. the amount, and um, and I do know that um, that I, I do know other towns are applying, like Sharon is applying for it and stuff like that, and and I do know that the person who worked on the um, this first trail is not available until 2021. So, um, but, um, and I don't know the amount. I do know that um, because it's that it's due December 17th, and it, we would hear by February if we got any money, and it would be um, rewarded. Um, it would be rewarded in June 1st, but the thing about it is that we, we have to upfront the money and then they would reimburse us. Yeah, which is the case with most all grants. Yeah, it's so, a reimbursable. Anyway, so, so I do know that's, that's how the, that's run. Right. Yeah. And I can find out. I'll ask Thatcher when I talk to him because yeah. I want to find out what the Act 250 issue is for the trail. I'm, it's a big it's issue. Turning into a lot of bass is really struggling with it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of other bike trail systems are really struggling with it. States decided it's now. It's bad for business. It's yeah, yeah. Right. it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we never had that. We never had to do that before. Yeah, yeah I, the, my email to Thatcher was, you know, <clears> you know, let's talk about this because <clears throat> active fifty is not a cheap process to get through either. So yeah. figure yeah. that out. The somewhere. governor has been trying to work on it for the past <laughs> two years, but he hasn't <laughs> gotten anywhere. So. Yeah, so we'll see what the, I'll find out from him what the situation is. But. Now, I know when the recreation facility fund was started, mm -hmm. um, after the master plan was formulated, mm -hmm. the base amount for that fund was $10,000. And then I know there's been years that we've increased and there's been years that we've decreased. Increase. Yeah, it's, it's but the 10000 is kind of the baseline yeah. funding yeah. towards the overall picture and you know trails are included into that and you know what the master plan was on on that so mm -hmm. i mean i know that 
like you want to use 5,000 for the trails and then put another 10,000 in the fund. But we also, right now in that fund, we have, we have a considerable amount of money in that fund. I just, I was looking at it um, tonight, I printed it out, so. Yeah. You know, you have, whatever, mm -hmm. 50,000 of its earmarked for the yeah. skate park and if it happens, but you have another 25,000 in there to yeah. cut trails or so could we earmark, put up a basketball court or. So could we earmark 5,000 somewhere for the trails? That, well, that's what I'm saying. If you have $75,000 yeah. in your recreation account, that, that account was established to go towards the master plan of the recreation right. facility. Right. So what the voters had, wasn't a formal vote, but no. had agreed upon, your committee is tasked with formulating that plan and paint, and, and we, as the select board, puts, put aside the money for that. So right now you have $75,000 sitting in that account. So, which is supposed to go towards that plan. And if you look at that plan, that includes well, we you know, skate park, to, the we tennis courts, the sure trails, can, those things. Like, do if we get five thousand for trails and not say, oh no, we no, you can't use that. Well, the trails so weren't part we're, of the. Were, were, were the trails part of the master plan? No. Yes. Oh, they were. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, there was part in there. Okay. So, I mean, I guess yeah. what I'm saying is there's, there, so we're aside for the skate park that may or may not happen. There's twenty-five thousand extra dollars mm -hmm. that are sitting in there for your committee to manage towards the next pieces, plus you'll get another 10, so you'll yeah. technically well, have 35,000. If you use five for the trails, then you have a balance of 30. We just want to make sure that, that if, if we ask for 5,000, that, 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 that it could come out from the 10, you know? No, you have to ask. They have no authority over the, over the um, capital funds, so the only one who can spend funds out of the capital funds are the select board. So, so if they yeah, want to make a request, that. they could come in and make a request. I mean, but that, yeah. Yeah. Right, it's already yeah. involved. Yeah. So it can change. Absolutely. Well, it has revolved. It has yeah, been right. yeah. amended. It has evolved. Um, yeah. Evolved. I mean, I, I guess I can't sit here and tell you 100% that if you come to the board next year that they're going to give you $5,000 because who knows? Who right. knows? We may that's, not be here. You know, it may be a whole what, new group of people, you know. Trying to just but earmark 5000 for the trails to make mm -hmm. sure that we... But the intent it. is that the money that is in that fund goes that. towards the... Not just the master, master plan. plan, because the wording for that was also, you know, wasn't just specifically for the master plan. Like, we replaced the pump in the pool. I mean, it, the wording of mm -hmm. it, because I've gone back and we went, when Greg was here, read the wording of that article. So it does cover, you know, also to the right. pool, you know, maintenance and stuff. But, um, but there. The, 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 the select board means that we've been a part of this last year, they said that that was for the master plan. You know, and this is part of the master plan. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. that's why we want to just ensure that you know, if we, if we, you know, that we can get that five thousand, we can get five thousand, and 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 not come to you and you say no. Yeah. You have to do that's got to stay in there for something else. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and as long as I'm on the board, if it goes towards the master plan, then I will be behind it because okay. that's what the voters want. Okay. Um, but if you come to me and say you want five thousand dollars to put in a water park, then that changes things, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, at that point. Right. But <laughs> we got one over there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it changes because that's not what the voters yeah. voted on, and you know we have to go through that process. So but. May I ask, on, in the thing there, it says thirty dollars was spent. As of eleven eighteen, what was the thirty dollars spent on it? It was probably a coding error. I'd have to go back and look. I can't okay. tell you here. I don't have your whole detail, okay. but I don't know. It shouldn't be in there because so it's probably okay. a coding error. Because it, I, I just it says thirty dollars, so I just I see it. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to go back and look, but anything for thirty bucks shouldn't have come out of that one. So. Oh, okay. yeah. Thank you. Um, and then my question is: There's a new line item called retirement that is yes. kind of in there. Yep. So can you explain? Of course, or? yep. Um, I hired Dietrich to work um, as a finance clerk as well. So she works for the town of Bethel now for 30 hours a week. So she works um, 
uh, Monday through, for the most part, she, once she gets going here, she's going to work Monday through Thursday. So she works, some of her hours come out of the rec budget and some of her hours come out of the um, town manager's, you know, finance budget. So um, we have to, be, once you are an employee like that, a regular scheduled employee, um, we belong to the VS VSERS, which is the state retirement fund, and it's mandatory, so she has to participate in it. So um, her before, when she was a seasonal employee, it didn't matter, but now that she's no longer seasonal, um, so, she's, so she's been hired not to be seasonal. She has been hired as a year-round employee, yes. As a year-round employee. Okay, that 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 is good to know because um, basically. No, and, and, and I know that's your right to do, but um, just it, it, to have be transparency and to be up front with the townspeople and everything, um, you know, there might be questions that come up with that. So yeah, sure. We've talked about it at board okay. meetings, so yeah. That's yeah, because no so that the committee never knew that that, will, that was happening. It wouldn't matter. But it wouldn't matter to the committee. Yeah. yeah. Because okay. her duties at the rec facility have not changed. And nor do they have it, they're not, and you don't oversee her as an employee either. Right, so. right. The problem is, as soon as she became a full-time employee with doing yeah. work at the office, oh. she now becomes eligible or to participate okay. in all yeah. the functions, which oh. happens to affect okay. the director. Yeah, because you're yeah. the only one that you guys really make any recommendation to the board about is just that specific rec facility fund. Okay. So I mean, the rest of your budget is decided by, mm -hmm. you know, us. Right. Well, um, I do, uh, no, and that's good to clarify that that's what's happening so that we're not, we're not, um, you know, in, in, um, wondering about it. We're not, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's good to, um, know what's what. Absolutely. So, so, you know, and not to have things happen that we're, you know, the town or other people are not aware of. Yeah. And that's why I'm bringing it up because, uh, you know, it, it just, when people look at it at the bid, budget and they say, oh, this is a surprise, what happened? Oh, yeah, I'll be so, happy to answer that question. Yeah. How much is the retirement? Um, it's, uh, right now, it's the town. The employee pays 6.65%. So how much the, came out of the budget? And the town pays it's $1,700. Yeah, it's only, yeah, the town pays 13 So out of this budget, it took out, yeah, seventeen eighty nine. So. Yeah. And, and I'm not aware that we're just doing the improvement from the committee because um, way back when, when Keith was um, town manager, there were some questions with the committee and Keith and and the select board, mm -hmm. so that, um, because we used to um, uh, um, recommend lifeguards, we used to interview lifeguards, we mm -hmm. used to you know, do all that kind of stuff. I know things have been changing yeah. that way. And, um, and um, so, um, because there was um, questionable things and misunderstandings and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that the, um, the uh, select board and the committee and the administration worked on a new mission statement. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if maybe I have the wrong mission statement. I've never or, seen it. I would um, so, um, but, um, but, um, and if this mission statement is not correct <coughs> that we came up with, then you know, um, Thank you. I would, I would, um, I, I don't mind being corrected, but, but, um, but I, we settled on this with um, the administration and the committee and um, the select board and and. So there is more than just the improvement um, that we that we work on. Well, I'll take a look at it and um, and uh, yeah, get and, back and, to and I've never seen it. And yeah. Well, this is what we came um, worked on together. Mm -hmm. What, like I said, with the administration, select board, and and committee, and mm -hmm. um, came up with a new because we were not going to be interviewing lifeguards anymore. We were not going to be 
doing um, a lot of the things that the committee right. did, and we, you know, whatever. So I just want to be upfront and make sure that we're on the same wavelength and things are not happening that we don't know or that we that we um, are trying to do. Yeah. You, you know, whatever. I just yeah, it's I, I'll take yeah. a look at it because yeah. just at a quick glance, it definitely so, needs to change because yeah. um, but so that's so, no problem. I'll take yeah. a look at it. I yeah. appreciate you sharing because, this because if, if we're having different mindsets, it's not we fair. are. So that's good. I didn't yeah, know this it's, not, it's not fair to right. This is, both to this is good. Thank you. Um, I think one thing that yeah, um, well, kind of on the topic of. The fund itself, but I think we're at the point where we need to get from the committee a uh, a roadmap of the the game plan of the stages in which things are going to be built over there, and just like we do with you know if if we're going to buy a fire truck, we show that it costs us four hundred thousand dollars over this period of time. And it shows us, you know, defects coming out, the revenue going in, and where the overlaps are at. And right now, I just feel like we're we're putting money into a fund, and you know, after this, we'll have eighty-five thousand dollars in there. But the roadmap is kind of foggy, um, and I want to make sure that one that we don't underfund it, but we don't overfund it as well, right. because right now we're kind of just, you know, like I said, we're putting ten thousand in because that was kind of the baseline, but does 10 really need to be 25 or does it need to be zero? Because how much more dollars is it going to take to do the master plan and over how many years is this going to take us so we can plan for this? Because, you know, we're trying to get rid of those, you know, the spikes and valleys. We're trying to get the bell curve. So if it's going to, if we have $75,000 in there right now and you say we've done all our research, the total for the master plan is going to be $200,000, then we know over the course of X amount of years that we can put 20 grand a year in and then it kind of balances out because we don't want to have to go to the voters all of a sudden and say, like the year we did for the skate park, we went from 10 to 40, we need $40,000, you know, that jump is, it's two pennies on the tax rate, it's a big jump, you know, so we want to try to avoid that, but it just doesn't seem like we... Well, we have an understanding of right. well, we keep looking what the map into, looks like. Into grants and we keep working on grants and stuff. Um, we, you know, and we we want to um, the next year look into the land water conservation grant that we didn't get last year, and they're not doing it this year. So the state isn't doing it. It's not available this year. So we want to look into that. We want to look into. Um, Somebody, when we were filling up the water the other morning, said that um, Mascoma Bank um, would love to give money away. We didn't know that. And, um, but Therese, you know what I'm talking about. I do. Yeah. Like any of our funds that we have yeah. right now. So if yeah. you go look at yeah. you know, the capital improvement fund, then you're yeah. going to see that, yeah. you know, okay, in 20. 2025, we're going to build this building. So right now we're right. putting money in because we know this building is going to cost Absolutely. X. Yeah. And right. we've never gotten anything from the Recreation Department no, showing well, what the plan's going to cost us in what right. coming yeah. years and what well, should we, we be got, putting in there. We got the original estimate, but it didn't, it, the, the figures weren't right. really adequate. And we thought, and, and basically we, well, at the start, we thought the pool house would be in two years. It was four years. Right. You know? uh, so. And it's a moving. Our, it's a moving target. Our so. Our timeline. Our timeline is, you know, just changed because we're not experts on <clears throat> how, when we can do that and when, you know, we're just volunteers and we don't have that expertise. But if we and could, the good thing is too, she's coming in uh, January. They'll have some numbers back, you know, better yeah. for the skate park, and, and then that'll help her too. Is once she knows 
okay, yeah, next year they're definitely gonna build a skate park. That, that's gonna help her too. She'll be able to say, okay, this is what it's gonna cost, this is what I have left, you know. Then the next thing we would be able to look at is, you know, the joint, you know, whatever, basketball slash skating rink or whatever's next. Yeah. And we could look at those things and kind of see, okay, what's the cost for that? But you're right. I mean, we definitely need to have a capital plan just like we do for other things. So it, I can That way we can properly it. fund it. And again, this is money that is tucked aside for yeah. really that intent yeah. of and we building can, that. Are you getting, are you getting does the yes, rec committee have a plan of the of projects? Not even the money. I mean, well, there's yeah, a master yes. plan that shows yes. what yes. what so the layout of the yes. property yes. will look like has, when it's done. And it has been changed because of different. Well, I think it'll always change. You know, yes. I, I get that. Yeah. And we did. We did. We had and we presented it to the town at a town meeting. We talked about it. We had posters. We had all those kind of things um, years ago. But it's just right now with every fund, well, pretty pretty much every fund we have. Like if you, I'll use a simple one. If you look at the cruiser replacement fund that we did last year, right? So we have, we can show it on a spreadsheet that, you know, that two years from now we're going to buy the new cruiser. And it shows every year we're putting $5,000 in. And then we're going to get to said year that we have 15 in it. And the cruiser is going to cost us 14, let's say. You know, or mm -hmm. you know, so we know where that's coming, and we know that we're properly putting the right amount of money in. We just, I don't want to get in a position where all of a sudden, let's say the skate park goes right in, and we do another thing, and now we're ready for something else, and we'd be like, oh, well, we don't have any money, or right. or we have to go to people and say, hey, we need fifty thousand dollars to build this. You no, know? we might can do work that because once we once we finish a project, then we go looking for money and oh, for you know grants and stuff. And, and then we figure out how much the tennis courts are going to cost, and we don't. Um, and then what we do is we figure out how much the tennis courts are going to cost, we fit, and then we figure out what kind of grants we can get for that, and then we proceed. But it also it I can also work with the committee and help them yeah. with the budget. Like okay. And it also gives us as the board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, a timeline that we can follow up and say, hey, exactly. it looks like you're off a year. What's going on? And yeah. um, I, I can help them with that. I don't because I, I mean, right now, like last year, we put 10000 in there. I think we just threw it in there. And yeah. Yeah. this year, we're throwing 10000 in there. And, you know, is it... Is it a worthwhile ten thousand, or should we be putting more? Or, I mean, I think yeah, any of us here know well, that's what we should be putting in there. That's why we said fifteen thousand for this year. But but for instance, if you said fifteen thousand, I understand that five's going for the trails. Yeah. But what's what's the hierarchy of the rest of the money going towards, and when is it going to be spent? Twenty five on spent from past year. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. So I just, anyways, that's just kind of. Yeah. No. It, it, it's kind of almost. Um, you know, like, if okay. somebody wants to get onto a committee or off a committee, we ask for a letter, right? Yeah. Letter to get on, letter to get yeah. off type deal. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. If we're going to have a fund, we need to be able to show right. the taxpayers that well, this is the game plan, this is how much yeah. is going in, this is how much is coming out, so that well, we can be game, transparent with The game plan changed. Well, I'm, I'm just saying there's a likelihood that someone's going to stand up yeah. at town meeting day and say, Oh, yeah. Oh, they are. 10,000 more is going in. We've heard about the skate parks right. not happening. Right. How much money do you have in your account? Which they'll know because which, they'll say which, on there, why which, should we give you more money? You right. know? Right. But that money going in, you said it's not for the skate parks. So that's why we're going to... No, but I'm just saying overall, somebody... I know. So is like, I, and I, if they pose that question to me, yeah. I'm not going to be able to answer it. I, and I would like to be the one to say, I'm, like last year with the fire department, I could, me, I could go know, through and say it's for this, this, yes, and that. And but if they ask me, I'm gonna, I don't and know. And that's why last year I got up when they asked that, and I answered their question last year. And and I'm willing to do that this year, is to get up and say this is um, where we're at, um, um, and that that you know that the town approved fifty thousand. We had a fundraiser. We had a little back. Money, so we have about sixty thousand that we're working with with the cons with the contract. <coughs> so, so that's where we're at. But get um, ready for the tough questions because yeah, they're coming. Yeah, yeah, I, guarantee. I, yeah, yeah, they're I, coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I have one more, one more question. Um, and that is um, to deal. Uh, it, 
probably not reflected in the budget, but but um, but because um, and that question is at the very end of the recreation center. Um, there's a ditch. You know, talked about ditches earlier. Yep. Um, uh, apparently, um, there's a problem with the area where the swing set is. Yeah, there is. We're going to have to address it in the spring. And so, um, so I was wondering if that's in the budget to do something about that because I did, I, you know, people were, the thought process was that the logging operation years ago did something that messed up the ditch so that the area under the swing set floods so much that that it doesn't dry up until mid June. And see, we're on uh, plans to move the swing set, and that's where the skateboard park is going. Well, we're going to deal with all the runoff from the mountain and stuff uh -huh. from that field when we, um, you know, when you put in a skate park. So I figured we'd take care of that other issue at the same time. So, oh, I, okay. yeah, and the guys will take care of it in kind. So, okay. yeah, I think we'll right. kill two birds with one stone. I just wanted to make sure because I did, so, yeah. um, you know, um, see that um, the thought was that to maybe clean out the ditch every two years or so sure. and yeah. then have have a you know some way that water can run down path but yeah. maybe behind catchums or behind gw or something so there's some, yeah so no, we'll deal with it with okay. that and with that in kind so i figured yeah. because i knew we had an issue up there with where the skate park was anyway so we were gonna have to do some drainage right. there so right. we'll deal with it yeah. okay as a right. part of that and we'll yeah. take okay. care of it yeah that's my question okay Next. thank you very much Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, parks? parks and public places. So, uh, there's just the changes in the wages. You can see I put the 27.5 percent. Just I, I went back and was trying to do a realistic on looking at past time cards and how much time was actually being spent where. Now that I knew the mowing schedule and how many weeks a year and how many days a week for that those amount of weeks, I recalculated um, how much went into public works, how much goes into parks, and how much goes into water sewer. Um, so that's why there's an increase there in, in wages. Um, just trying to make sure it's allocated so that the public works department isn't getting hosed by paying too much or, you know, so everybody's paying their share of actual work. Um, we dropped the maintenance a little bit. Um, we did leave in Bob and Sheila Taylor's <coughs> estimate. We talked about that and you had said to leave that in, so I did. Um, so there's a, an increase in the budget and part of it is, you know, the estimate from um, Bob and Sheila and then, you know, the rest was based on, um, you know, an, the mowing and stuff and the wages. That all kicks off, obviously, Social Security, Medicare, retirement, all that. Um, health insurance all picks off the same percentage. So, yeah. but that's definitely a more accurate representation of the wages versus I think last year I had. I want to say 15.6 percent, and um, so it just wasn't accurate of what he was working there. So. Okay. Any questions of that? So that difference in the number comes out of the other two places. Right, exactly. So a little, exactly. Bit, so a little I bit here, a little bit there. It reduced a little bit in public yeah. works, okay. so a little bit more went in parks, and I think a little bit more went in water. So I was trying to, now once I knew that he was mowing three, three and a half days a week, how many weeks in the summer, I kind of was able to come in with a sharper mm -hmm. number mm -hmm. there. Yep. Now I did notice that the insurance, there was an insurance line that had been 2000 in the past, and Looks yeah, like not I, a lot I actually even, hits it. Yeah, so exactly. what is that insurance for? Is that for like the band shell yeah, building? Yeah, some, some of it exactly. It's for buildings. And yeah, yeah and the, their premium is, is exactly like that. It's like okay. 20, it's I, ridiculously low because it's just the gazebo. I didn't and, know if we were missing something. No, <laughs> no just, I don't know how, yeah, low. they had a bigger number. There was okay. a bigger number there, but I went back and reworked it. And and um, when I got the insurance this last week or two and, and um hmm. Because you can get the breakdown from BLCT as to who covers what, and then I was like, this needs to drop. So that's pretty much for like the band shell. Yeah. Is there any other building, or does that cover like the gazebo? Yeah, the band shell burnt down or something, or yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, it's just not a lot because the whole general liability policy, I think, just goes falls to the 
other mm -hmm. part of the general fund, but those were for the actual building. Okay. So it's, it's really cool. So that's an increase there, but that's why. That's also why there was a part of the decrease in the highway budget too, was because there was savings there as well yep. as the other side of the salary. So. Okay. And municipal office? So that budget's down almost 10%. So obviously it was a savings in insurance um, and um, just a savings mm -hmm. in by not bringing somebody in full time. So I, did, I do also think that out of maintenance of the building, I think that we could cut that from 65 <clears throat> to five. Um, I did talk to someone about how, what the cost of the window was gonna be. Um, and obviously doing bigger things like any insulation or remediation and I just mailed the samples of the insulation away so we'll find out what that is because we took samples of the insulation in the upstairs in the attic because if it's zona light they will pay for like 50% of the remediation and so we're just trying to find that out but those would be bigger expenses which can come out of the capital fund so by just doing some painting cleaning, replacing the window, and doing some other stuff. I think that I'm just gonna um, cross that, make that number to go from 65 to five. So you'll see a savings, another additional savings of 1500 bucks right there. And I know we were talking that, you know, when we get back in session, um, probably after town meeting day, we'll start working a little harder on the, uh, like public works building. And we mm -hmm. had talked about yep. that public works was mm -hmm. priority then, yep. you know, obviously the town office wouldn't be priority. So there was a list of to-do list for the town office there to bring is. it up to speed for yeah, say, they, 10 and or 15 I think, years. I mean, for the five grand, I can upgrade the electrical, so, replace the window. Do we have any idea what that might be and what the timeline and- To do what? Well, we had talked about, you know, maybe, well, it's probably a question for next year, but yeah. you know, if we do shift our focus to the public works building, yeah, which obviously means in the town office, nothing would happen there for a decade or yeah. so. Right. Um, so, and we had talked before; we'd thrown some numbers around that it might cost twenty or twenty-five thousand to update stuff in the office right. to make it last that long. Absolutely. So, what I'm waiting but, for now is to find out what that insulation is because that's remediation could be expensive. So and you mentioned insulation, and you mentioned uh, I need to upgrade heat the electrical. Source. Uh, the heat's been repaired. That okay. was because the chimney, thank you to Chief Baltrigetti, realizing that the chimney wasn't working. So we fixed that problem last year. And Dave said, you know, the first thing we need to do, obviously, is upgrade the electrical. So the, up, the service needs to go to a 100 amp service. We need to insulate, because we're just, it's cold in there. Uh -huh. it's, the whole building just needs right. some heat. And um, so we need to do insulating. I talked to Alex Reister when he was here, and he was the one who said, you know, Trudy, you might want to have someone sample the upstairs and get that sent away to figure out what you're dealing with. So we'll have a better okay. understanding there. Um, I'm having it cleaned now because it's disgusting. Um, we need to do some painting, and there's something going on with the porch roof, and it, it's leaking, and it's it, I, I don't even know. I don't even. I need to get somebody to come take it apart and tell me what is happening. I don't well, know where the water is coming. Insulation. Hmm. It's probably a lot of that's how they get the insulation plugged in there. <laughs> I don't know if there's any insulation well, left up there. The yeah, whole porch roof is, and there's a, a false roof built over. It. There's two roofs, okay. and the second roof is all sleepers and vented, except for the porch. They mm -hmm. close it all in and put like three little holes in the yeah. end of it, and I just think that. The condensation. I was gonna say condensation building. building up it's in not the air breathing. leaking in. That's probably yeah, because there's no it. obvious. It's not breathing. No yeah. Gaps in the. You can in see the that the porch entrance is when they added it on. There's just no yeah. no venting in that tall roof. And if you look yeah. at that porch, it's rotted. The okay. whole front of that porch and is that was fixed it's rotted. Not many years ago. And it, well, I mean, it takes a beating because you got all the water. I mean, I walked in today, and the whole side of the building is covered with spray with water mud because. It's right there in the front porch. You know, when Dave was looking, because I we were looking at the porch, I'm like, what is going on with the roof, the porch? And Gene, I asked Gene Burnham, and Gene said that they had done once they had done the roof initially, they put on the is it standing beam. So she said they had a problem, and she said she went to the then town manager and said, I think you need to get that contractor back here because I don't think something was done right. And 
they didn't and that's that and so but that whole porch probably needs to be torn off mm. and because it is rotted if someone pushed hard you're going to fall right and you're going to you what? When they rebuilt it last time, they did it right out of wood again instead of a PVC product or something that'll take the salt and the grime. And but that'll probably be, you know, when we get back in session after town meeting day, we'll have to look hard at that next year to see what, if, if we want that building to last us another 12 or 15 years, what is it going to, do we exactly. have to put money aside to build another porch or, you right. know, what are yeah. we going to do? And My hope is to get a contractor to go through and look at a few things, but right now I need to know, you know, the bigger, the base things I think right now are upgrading the electrical, which I, but I need to figure out what the insulation is because I can't have someone poking around up there if it's zone mm -hmm. light. And so <clears throat> once we get the insulation mystery settled and then we can upgrade, you know, we definitely need to upgrade to 100 amp service, the building. And um, and then definitely need to deal with insulation because it's you know it's we go through a lot of fuel because people are cold and when the heating bill we keep the heat low people have electric heaters that they plug in because you know it's hot air and it comes in it's warm and then it's gone and you're freezing so um, so we're definitely trying to sort that out. Where it's cold, right? Well, you know, it's, exactly. like it's freezing. It'll huh? be just like the fire department. It'll have you'll be cold. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean and that's that's it. Everybody knows to dress in layers. Everybody has, I told Dietrich that, I'm like, bring a sweatshirt, bring something, you're going to need to leave something here because you're going to be cold. You're going to have to, I'm sorry. Dan had one the other day, yeah. one old, old style. Yeah. Years. It's, yeah. You can see the lights in them when it comes up. Huh? Jesus, not bad it was three meetings ago. Yeah. Exactly, like here. Yeah. Oh, I know, it was <laughs> awful. <coughs> so Save I'm going to drop that, money. Chris, from 6,500, I think, to 5,000. Okay. And, um, That'll be a little savings there. And that budget's already down almost 10%, so we'll bring it down a little bit more. And then we're pretty sure with the copy count yep, I piece know. that that, that will um, cover everything that yes, we need to yep, do. Yep, I got an estimate from them. I'm working with them now and um, sending stuff back and forth. So I'm doing, yeah. oh, the payroll's ready. You can sign it tomorrow. But, so tomorrow we'll do, so the end of December will be the last payroll that we'll process and then it will go directly to Compi Count. So I'll do the spreadsheet here, but they'll cut the checks and do all that stuff. So that'll be terrific. Um, but yeah, so I got the estimate from them, Chris. So we're still gonna have to, still gonna have to approve it though? Or look well, at we're it gonna have to look at that work? and see. What we've done in the past <coughs> in different towns is, is you can just authorize annually, you could make a motion annually to authorize the treasurer to approve payroll, then you guys sign the, we bring it monthly and you guys sign off on I have to see what they're going to be sending us for paperwork, so it's going to be a learning curve for all of us in the beginning. But. Okay. Anything else in the municipal office? Is training enough? Yep. Last item on the, on the list. Oh, is it enough? Is that what yeah. your question was? Oh, I, I think so. It depends. A lot of the classes we're really lucky are, are free. They're free. Or they're pretty inexpensive, so which is nice. And, and now, you know, I've been doing some net webinars, and they're like $35, so that's really nice. Yeah, and I can't remember. I don't, I don't remember how much did we pay to go to that class, Jason. Do you remember? We paid. It was pretty cheap. Yeah. It's you know, like 35 bucks a month. Yeah, I was gonna say it wasn't that much money to do the local yeah. roads. Um, Jason and I went to the same class in Stowe. Yeah, let's see, town hall. So I think that we can reduce the Should building repair yeah. Yeah. Yep. from seventy five hundred. I went through the building today. I walked through every room. I looked at window sills to see if they still had, um, you know, urethane on them. To look if any walls need to be painted, anything like that. And I think they're in pretty good shape. But I do have a question. What's the deal with the clock? Like, there was no clock, but then Greg kept talking about this clock. Then I saw a <laughs> clock there, like, once, and then I never saw it. That clock was donated. I was like, what? Yep. It died. It's really it historical. Fell off the floor. Yeah. Yeah. It it fell donated, off and it died, the floor. and then it fell off and smashed. Oh. Because they can only use certain types of fasteners to hold it onto the wall, and yeah. it fell and smashed, and that was, one of those that was the end of the clock. Holding it up. Yeah. <laughs> who, who, boy, who donated it to you? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Okay. I wasn't sure when I, I was looking today, and I'm like, well, where is 
that thing? It wasn't that you're like... That was a long I, time I in the making. It, well, it, took, it took forever to get it home. It took a year and a half to get the clock and then put it up there and a month and a half later. About two months. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, it, it was like with a historic building, it took yeah. forever to get one. Yeah. And then we got it and it only lasted like it a let month or a month right. and a half and then it stopped working and then it fell off. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. of the story. Oh, in here. So I wasn't sure. So I will say, so I know um, that we're going to get the balloon out of the thing. We have to do some scaffolding. But I do have another question. When I went to go in the balcony, there's all these pictures. And I could have sworn that I remembered maybe in my somebody coming to the select board about hanging. Yeah, yeah so they're yeah. going to... Historical the Society. Edek is going to put in um, the same rail they have downstairs. So he's screwing on to the wall. Why couldn't you screw your... Because it's historically accurate to the building. So they're allowed to do certain I want some yeah. things about it. So he's going to do the same thing that's yeah, downstairs. So they're going to put high the rail... High school graduation pictures. Yeah, that's what I saw because it's we need to get them out of that. Right. So. I think there's there's plan for it. I don't know what awesome. process it's in. Okay, I could ask him Is because I a... saw them when I was looking today, and I'm like, there's something about yeah. those. I remembered either reading minutes I, or. I do wonder though if they're installing something like that. Could uh, could a section of that same rail be done for a clock? Right. Because <laughs> that was a historically looking clock. Oh, it had to be, yeah. They went through a whole gyration <laughs> about what it looked like. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, and then we have the listers piece. Yep, so this is pretty much the same as before. We have, um, you know, I, I didn't change anything, I don't think. I, we talked about the assessor services, we put it to 10. We had it at five, but we had talked about 10 being probably a better number, and so that's what we're doing. Um, especially now, later, you're looking at, um, you know, we have now have Jim's letter, President Kraut, when he's going to get done, we have Roberta's letter that she is done, and then obviously you can appoint Judy, but you're still going to have an opening because, um, you know, Judy could be the only lister. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no pressure. And uh, so we went to that. That's the learner, are you? I know. The only other thing that increased was computer. VLCT's um, fees went up significantly. And, I, and doing that actually made me realize that the transfer station hasn't been paying anything all these years. So I took their bill and divided it by three. So the town office, listers, and the transfer station will pay their share now. So, um, so that was the only change in the budget was we talked about, and the 10 may have been even here last time. So, so that's that. I mean, I, um, not to back up here, but um, we had talked about at the beginning of this year when we were examining some of the the town officials other than the select board but you know we were talking about at one point the um, like the cemetery commissioner the health officer maybe there was one other one we were talking about you know how how do these salaries come about you know I mean some of these have been set at whatever six hundred dollars for the past yeah. ever Mm -hmm. And, you know, sh should we revise them? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, some of these positions, um, in order to do that correctly, I mean, is, you know, I mean, I, I know mm -hmm. these people are, are not doing it to get paid. However, I mean, there's a lot of time and that and comes think, into it. And, you know, I mean, uh, if you're only paying somebody $600 that could spend, you know, one day a week. Mm -hmm. You know, or the health officer at times. I mean, is, yeah. is that? I think that it's really up to you. Where I came from, the health officer was busy, and they didn't even get a stipend. It was right. a voluntary position, so, so. Um, they didn't. So it's really town by town. Certainly, I know that, um, and I can't speak to the health officer. I don't know how often. You know, where I came from, I had more contact with the health officer. Here, yeah. I don't hear really about any Comes um, in activities spurts. that yeah. they had. The cemetery commissioner, I think that you have a very active cemetery commissioner, and he seems to take care yeah. of a lot of things. Trees doing that, a lot of stuff by himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's actually looking for his own replacement. So I had given him a suggestion or two the other day when mm -hmm. he was in, and which is too bad because he has a lot of knowledge about who's buried where and that sort of thing. Um, certainly, he obviously doesn't do it for the money mm -hmm. or he would have given up a long time ago. But it really depends, Chris, on your town. Like I said, I, towns where come from where you don't, some of these positions aren't even paid. I was actually right. surprised that your person got a stipend. And I was yeah. very surprised that it was bigger than the stipend that the slug got. <laughs> so, uh, so, um. Sounds like we're all gonna be running a cemetery commission. Yeah, exactly. But it was just, it was, <clears throat> yeah, no. Yeah, no. It was one of those many things that we had looked at and mm -hmm. um, just after town meeting day last year where we're like, you know, it was when we were getting into like, yeah. you know, why is a said fee of twenty dollars when it costs us eighty dollars to do the work? You know, yeah, exactly, and, absolutely. And when was the last time somebody looked at some of these? And, and I think, and how really, does it compare with other towns? And I mean, I can take a know. peek. It may be hard to find out, yeah. frankly, because, um, like I said, I think there's going to be a lot of towns where they're not paid yeah. at all. And the other thing too is some towns have. A cemetery commission, like a board that kind of manages stuff, and you yeah. don't have that. Okay. I didn't have that where I came from either. So it's, I think it's town to town, but I, I can assure you that I'm, I'm certain that um, any one of these folks would be thrilled to see an increase in their appropriation. But I can, um, let me try to dig around and see what I can find out. Um, yeah, I was just curious. I mean, I, I mean do you them. have to pay them, or is there you a, don't. you know? I can tell you that, but let me look at local cemetery commissioners and um, health officers. I can look around at surrounding towns and see what they pay. Yeah. I mean, you know, because we do know that, you know, 
like the health officer when that comes around there'll be somebody new will be looking to do that, that. Door to do that. <laughs> yeah no no i will pay somebody six hundred dollars a year to make sure that that does well, not happen take your yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, yes you could have it <laughs> yeah, do not call me um, <laughs> but you know, I mean, there will be some of those opening, and yeah, you know, maybe they be coming around. No, but yeah. I know, like I said, that um, you know, somebody looking at the cemetery commission. So let me mm -hmm. do a little. I can talk to a couple local towns and see. Not a big deal. See what they pay. We can all we have to do is I can look at some budgets from last year. So I will try to find out for you. Did you ask for the uh, slot board wages too, Chris, or not? I can. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm fine. I mean, but I'll ask. Or I can look at that. What's the select board member yet? Two hundred and fifty dollars if you're chair, and two hundred if you're not. I I, I I got that back in the eighties. Yeah. Same, same <laughs> reasons. I should make fans about complaining. They step up and try to run it for a while. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And they tell you it's worth two thousand yeah. dollars. Right. Mm. Oh, at least. Oh, if you if you if you become a school board member, you'll make triple that. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> huh? Well, if you're doing it for the money, then you're in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. It's just one of those. It's probably been set like that for. And everybody's different. You know, we many had, many years. Our, yeah. The board where I came from had they have four hundred bucks. The chair got no more than anybody else, and they had four hundred dollars a year plus fifteen dollars a meeting. But yet, little Lincoln, which is was right next to us, you know that town is tiny. Mona's that is they were getting like eleven $1 hundred. You should have seen the the select board when they got. Therese, did you see what I bought? Nothing to do with setting your salaries. <laughs> uh, they actually vote on it every year at town mm. meeting. And one year they got a raise because the guy leaving the board voted from the floor to give the select board a raise. It was like, our guy had the following year, the budget was tight, so they cut their raise. They cut it back. So. But they got 15 per meeting, no matter how long it lasted. They got 15 bucks yeah. plus their stipend. I think it's be quick meetings. Yeah. What everybody does, you know? Yeah. How everybody does it differently. Yeah. So. I'll take a peek at those things. Right. And then pretty much the difference on the lister end is is the, the ten thousand we plugged in there for potential assessor fees. And the, yeah, and the increase um, in the um, cost process. With not knowing what the makeup of the lister yeah. office will look like after I'm trying to sweeten the tonight pot. and after the town meeting. Yeah, town meeting. So let's yeah. let's hope that we have, you know. And if you don't, the good thing is at least we have two enough. more individuals that step up because if yeah. it could get expensive for the town if, mm -hmm. if we don't have those services. And so. you can see, like I said, there's other towns this size um, and smaller that are doing the same thing mm -hmm. because they can't find. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mm -hmm. need right. good people to do that work, not mm -hmm. just anyone can be a lister. And the thing too is, uh, you know, the good thing about having the fourteen thousand the salary is, you know, if you end up having an assessor and then someone who works in the office, you know, to to mm -hmm. do the computer work or whatever between the assessor stipend and that you hopefully might balance actually it out get a little something bit. between a couple yeah. of people so yep uh, it's a place to start for sure and government operations Let's see i think that let's see it was up a little bit and i'm trying to remember why um <laughs> Tax abatements have been higher in the past, so I finally bumped that budget to try to cover for that. Um, and I also, um, voting equipment and supplies, I updated up that to $1,000 because it's an election, presidential election year. Maybe mm -hmm. you use your card, programming that card is not cheap if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So, um, advertising, um, I just, I left it at four. I actually brought it down a little bit. I don't, fingers crossed, won't be looking for anybody, so. Never know. And tax sale expenses, I also put that down by a thousand because I didn't hit that last year and I won't have as big of a tax sale this yeah. year. No, because we were, you know, so that'll save a little money there. So it's only a 1.37 mm -hmm. increase of percent. Now, what are we thinking in regards to the reappraisal fund? I know there's been some discussions into when we might have to do it, and yeah, do we I, have enough money, and well, you don't should we enough. be putting more money in here? Yes. Or, you <laughs> know. The answers are, no, you don't have enough money. Yes, you should be putting more money in, and I don't know. I mean, they've been working really hard, uh, Louise and, and uh, Jim and, and Roberta and I've been past to, to kind of 
you know, really keep a handle on it, but you're definitely going to be close to getting a reappraisal and you're not going to have enough money. It's probably usually, going to cost you 300 Usually the 300. money that we get from the state covers about half of it. Maybe. You know, about I right? forgot my town report. I, like usually I about half and then we'll have to come up with the other half. So if it's what, mm -hmm. probably what, quarter million dollars to reappraise Yeah, I think you'd be something. looking at 300 at least and it's usually going to be over two years. And, yeah. and the problem is that you're running into is a lot of people are getting out of the business, so you don't have a lot to choose from. And um, so I would think that within the next couple of years, and it's going to depend too on the lister makeup and if you have an assessor, I know that people, it's one of the reasons you've done. Because you know, we only started business. putting money in last year, so I mean, it's I not like... It's not like we have uh, been doing this for 10 years and we got 50000 You mean, know, luckily, you know, you had been putting aside the money that you got from the state, but I, I don't have my town report. I apologize. I caught ahead with me and I don't. Right. And I could tell how much we have. But yes, honestly, if you, if you don't put, if you were only to put maybe $5,000 in the rec fund, I would say you should put the other five here. So you definitely How, how often do we typically do... Reappraisals or what? Townwide reappraisals. Like Fifteen years, years or. Yeah, you get pushed into it mandatory by the state if you're if you're common if you're CLA. Right, goes over or, certain. Yeah. But um, let's see. We had done one in yeah, yeah, two thousand and. We what was it every dozen, fifteen yeah, years, something like that. You're probably looking at maybe oh perfect thank you maybe ten years probably ten twelve. So it sounds years. like yeah, on a cycle was, like. If we were basing it on a ten to fifteen year cycle, then we should be putting ten to fifteen thousand yeah. dollars a year in that. Exactly. Because and right now we obviously are behind that, and we're yeah. only putting five. So. So at the end of the year, thank you, Lindy. The teacher here cool. tell at one hundred eighty-seven thousand. Sour green. What's the big cost? You got that covered. Because last reappraisal. It was last reappraisal. Um. You said it like twelve. Are you spicy? 12 to, uh, maybe that's right. I'm getting confused between another town and... Well, 2007, that would be... Uh, so you, it was before I got here, because I, I, I've been that makes home sense. since 2007, that and I haven't... I think that's true. That makes sense, 12 years. And so she's saying that you're going to have one in the next year or so. Yeah, this is what she's saying. She's worked hard to keep it out. So right now, Chris, you have 137,000 so 138, in here. Plus, you added another 15000 on top of that because you have your Act 60 payment. Plus, we put five grand in there. So, so you're, there's one, say, 138, 148. You know. So, you're, you're about, you have about half of what you would need. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point, I mean, if we're doing it in the next two or three years, I mean, well, you know, we, need other, to, we need 40, 50000 a year in there. Yeah. The other thing, which, too, is. What can happen is what, what we have seen done in the past is when you sign a contract with these guys over two years, you divide up what the cost is right. and you're paying a monthly mm -hmm. fee. So, you know, at least this buys you a little bit of time and then you would, mm -hmm. you know, put it in there. But yeah, you should definitely be putting more money in there for mm -hmm. sure. Okay. So if you have money that you want to ship around, I oh, don't, yeah. I'll you donate definitely. donate my paycheck just got $3,000. Well, you just got $3,000. That get us closer. <laughs> So Chris, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we doubled it. So Chris, you know, Dave's right. We just cut three thousand. That would bring you to eight. And if you, bake sales and, and if you what else would bring you? Coin drop with us. Coin drop once a day. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, coin drops out there. Put up a toll booth. Oh boy. Okay. And then um, the appropriations. Um, uh, Paul gave a list to Kelly. I haven't seen it yet, so I just I can adjust those numbers now. Um, and White River Valley Ambulance was down um, significantly, uh, so which was good. We had a this last year was kind of tough. I had to put in the number because I didn't have their final stuff yet. And then so we looked at this at six months at ten thousand one fifty. Then I added another three percent. But you're still <clears throat> you still have this issue hanging out there. <laughs> I talked to Neil Fox about Randolph. Randolph is focused, apparently their attention right now is focused on the fire department. And they want to combine all the other into one location, which is going to be a fight for him. So he's focused on that now. So we have at least a year or two until he refocuses attention on 
the ambulance. And if that's the case, he's going to be needing at least a million bucks. And I, he mean the town manager in Randolph. Yeah. Because he, he'd need at least two ambulances, and I don't know how they divvy it up right now. Because if Randolph goes, Bethel's the next biggest population. I don't. I don't and see how the numbers work for Randolph. I, I don't know. I'm just telling you. I mean, we've done the numbers here, and I can't imagine there that if they're going to save any money. Per ten. Yeah. yeah. So everybody, they just have to have a bigger population. That's why. Right. But if they went on their own and they had two two buses and all the equipment, they're going to spend more than what it's they're spending I now. I know. I don't know what the I don't thing is. The only concern I have, and, 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 and maybe Dave can answer this, is if Randolph is days, then they and they don't want to use war, but then Randolph has the hospital, so I'm assuming they would keep all the money for transports and all that. So that's yeah. really yeah. going to affect. They would compete. Uh, that would money. Mm, exactly. Right. That's like one of the only true sources of income. Exactly. So if they lost that, yeah. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we we'll come to it. it. Really I mean, nice. but interestingly, Warba is licensed through Gifford. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. there's more to Pandora's box. Than yeah. Yeah. So I had just met with Neil Fox the other day, and and um, but so that's why that number dropped to one twenty three nine, mm -hmm. and then. You know, debt is debt, so that's mm -hmm. um, an estimate on the county tax, the alliance fee, and so that's really it. And Paul said, I think I had budgeted a 10% increase over last year, but Paul, you said you were to 5%. Closer to 5, yeah, a little over 5. <laughs> so I'll be able to adjust those numbers <coughs> for your next meeting, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So some, um, what, how I had looked at it, so with the budget the way it is currently, um, with the budget the way it is currently, and I know we tweaked it a little bit here tonight, it's yeah. not anything major. Well, um, it took, I mean, you took. But you're right now, you're, the way it is, you're, the revenues are up 38000 and the cost is up 112,000 and then the net increase is 74,000 which if you take that and divide it by you know 19,500 um, that'll get you about um, 3.6 cents yep. um, is about the increase on it um, I mean we can look at it by the percentages but you know per pocket that would come out of taxpayers would be a little over three and a half cents. So, in the last three years, we've been we've been kind of sticking to the or trying to stick to the th three cent mm -hmm. rule. Mm -hmm. Other than we've had you know the long term debt that you know popped up, but we were able to kind of manage that. Um, so right now we're at three point six cents, and then there was a couple of I'll call them kind of the more bigger. Um, maybe additions or subtractions to the budget. And a couple of things, what I was looking at is if we kept everything the way it is, um, but we took out the storm drains, so if yeah. we didn't do the storm drain portion, mm -hmm. the increase would be, it would actually decrease at one penny. So it, we'd be at 2.6 cents increase for the budget. Which we, 41,000 is two cents. But it would be too. It, it's just the way it all the percentage plays of the out in it. Package. So it would it would be down. I'm sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, it, I'm sorry. It was if we didn't do the storm drains, but we kept everything the way it was, it would be it would be just just under two cents. So it would be one point six four cents that we would be. Um, if we did the storm drains, but. Um, what I had said is if we took the gravel from 60,000 down to 45,000, like we were talking about a little bit, then, then the, um, we'd be looking at 2.6 cents increase in the budget. So you could do the, could do the storm drains, but we, you know, we chop a little bit out of the gravel budget. The only thing is that's only a one year relief and you're going to be paying for something for five years. So yeah. you'd have to find the money in the next four years to keep balancing that. It's the trick. And or if you took out the storm drains and you took out the fifteen grand in gravel, you could be at a half a cent increase 
for the tax rate. Well, so I those mean, are kind of some of the options that I had looked at. If you, but if you took out, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm never in favor of anything crazy because we just don't know. We're projecting out 18 months. You have no fund balance, no real savings. So if something goes wrong, I don't, I'm not going to, I can't pay for it. So that's always makes me a little bit nervous. Um, if you wanted to take the storm drains out and you had some savings, I mean, I'm all for if you want to stay around the, you know, under the 3% range, then I would, you know, I certainly wouldn't encourage you to ever go to something to take out the gravel and because if we had another flood event, you know, it's nice to have a little padding in the highway budget of some gravel. You could also put more money then into the reappraisal fund. So if you're not going to fund the storm drains, then fund some more money into the, you know, to the reappraisal fund or something. So, um, you know, and, and uh, it, it just seems like you just, you just can't cut off your nose and your face. You have to be. Well, know, I'm not, I'm not proposing no, no, I'm just to do saying, that. I'm not. I'm, I'm just not, laying it I'm out there. I'm just saying these are yeah. some options, but if you want to save one, then you could maybe, if you want to get rid of the storm drains and everybody's in agreement that you're not going to do that, then you could take at least some of that money and maybe put it towards your reappraisal fund so that you, because you know that's coming down the pike, possibly very soon. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just something to consider. Well, I mean, if we leave everything in, I mean, if we left everything in and doing kind of business as usual, let's say, you know, we, we have the spring flood event that we're, taken care of in yeah. here, which is six cents on the tax rate. So yeah. if we didn't have the spring flood event, right now we could do everything that's in this budget and have three cents back to everybody. I mean, that's exactly. that was the significant piece of this it's flood true. event that we had. That's true. I mean, we um, were lucky that we could and, and I think some of that is a credit to, you know, I mean, we're, we're being a little bit more efficient as a town now, mm -hmm. and we're starting to see that, you know, you know, one less person or half a person here, you know, we're, sure. half we're, person here, half person I, here. I wouldn't even say we've lost, mm -hmm. you know, we've increased our serviceability yeah. and, you know, we're more efficient. Um, but I do agree with Therese that we have to be careful because we don't, we want to future projection, you know, forward because for so long we managed this town on a very short term focus, um, so, you know, we do have some of these funds that are lacking that probably should have more money in them. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if the reappraisal fund, you could put enough money in there to yeah. make you whole. <laughs> no. But is there, other, is there other sections of the budget that we could put some money that we know that we're going to need soon? Oh, know? sure. I mean, I, I can um, tell you right now, you know that your capital, your apparatus fund for the fire department could use a little more money. I'm sure that your... You know your equipment fund for the highway could possibly could use more money because you have those two trucks that are gonna uh -huh. you know peter out at the same time. You know that you're gonna build a new um, you know town garage, so there's you know there and so and I did have a conversation with Alan about that um, about the garage too. So um, and it so seems like the garage is gonna be our next focus, mm -hmm. you know, or structure that we might mm -hmm. build in town. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's uh, it's still it's hard to. It's like the rec department. It's hard to take, you know, if we wanted to add, you know, if we normally do fifty thousand, if we increase that, but then we got to show the taxpayers this is the timeline on us doing right. the building and how this yeah. fits into the model, which I don't think we're <coughs> prepared to. Not yet. Really I mean, put we have, I've seen some. I have a couple numbers that I've seen, and I did talk to Alan the other day because he said that the um, building itself is it's not wood frame and steel. So my question is for, is it possible that obviously we have a couple of lean twos and things on the back that need to come off. I know there's issues with the, can you take that existing exterior off and, but still build on another bay or two, but using, you know, with the same steel that's there and then have some insulated, like a new metal building. I mean, you can see them for like 40 grand, but can we take the existing structure you know, I don't know. I need to get some expertise, so I need to talk to mm -hmm. some people about what my options are there. The structural um, steel post could be pretty well rotted out, too. The what is? The structural post for the building could be getting deteriorated. Exactly. I mean, we could have a structural engineer take a peek at it, or we could just say, forget it, we're just going to take the whole thing down, okay. and we're going to put up a new, you know, either a butler building or something like that. And because they weren't, you know, Alan was saying now, 
between the long bay, you can actually get quite a few things in there mm. as far as um, equipment, and, and um, but you certainly need, you know, another bay. Um, for us, it's an angle. We don't want to go digging too far off from, you know, mm. too far around there either. So, um, but I also haven't um, been in there when there wasn't equipment in there to see, you know, what is the, the what's the ground look like? But they could, they have equipment. They could dig up the concrete if we needed to pour. You know what I mean? They have equipment. They have the ability to do Make some sure of that. Can. Yeah. Make that, sure you can't dig though. Exactly. That's the whole deal going on over here about motors. Yeah. No, you I know. can't dig over there. No. Oh, They've had a garage there for. Yeah. A long time. That's mm -hmm. why they're doing what they're doing. They're going to cover that. Yeah. They can't dig. Yeah. Exactly. That and that's the thing. I don't know what the you know status <clears throat> of the floor is there either. If he needs, um, you know, what's the concrete like? So I don't know. I do know he needs a better system, more like a water, an oil water separators and things like that. But it would be nice to keep them where they are. I mean, in the sense that, you know, if we. We don't have a lot of options as far as where we're going to move them. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of land, and um, so we're just kind of kicking that around. But, the know, other thing we could do is, you know, if we wanted to pick a, you know, an increase, you know, this is our target increase, and put said extra money into the highway rehabilitation fund to pay forward potential ERAT for next year. Absolutely. You know, because we know that. You know, we have the, the Peavine project, mm -hmm. the River Road project. Well, they're both on the same section. We only have that one. We just have yeah. the slide there and then right, we only have two things left. The With slide, the culvert and the slide. The culvert didn't know. Oh, it did. No go. Oh, okay. So we have that and then we have the, what are we doing Penella with Bridge. Pinella Bridge? So right. Pinella Bridge could be could be $125,000 yeah. fix or it could be significantly less than that. Right. It all depends on what. We'll find out. Do we build yeah. a bridge? Do we... Exactly. Do we just buy and keep the temporary bridge? You know, what do we do there? Could be, we could be looking at another 118,000 next year. You know, do oh, we? Sure. Do we, you know, you know, do we say? Any capital you know, fund is going to be looking for money. Do we add some extra Everybody money in there knowing that we could pay that forward mm -hmm. for next year? Mm -hmm. um, the, the storm drains as a one year thing, it makes a lot of sense for me, but I just don't know mm -hmm. the next four years. Yeah. Well, you know, you're going to be paying that for four more years. So. By, oh, by, I think tomorrow or Thursday. So I, or tomorrow, yeah, by tomorrow or Wednesday. So let me see what he has, and I can ask him those questions. You know, what do you think the savings is if we do it now versus if we did it a few years from now? But the fact that yes, these guys are mobilized and digging. So let me get some questions answered there too. Plus, you have you know that hundred ninety thousand. Is that just for the project? That does that include the interest that you pay on the loan and all that or yeah that, that payment included that yeah it was the five because on on 190,000 five year you know we're going to pay 24,000 in just interest I know and so and the only thing which I is, could find for that's the, one penny on the a little more than one penny on the just an interest I know and the only thing I could find was the $20,000 yeah. um better roads grant to help you know and that's if you get it so I which that I doesn't even pay the interest on the loan I yeah. know I know it's one of those things mm -hmm. So I'll get the questions answered and you'll take another, you know, hopefully I, my goal would be that you would finalize the budget next time. I'll bring my computer and we'll just, any numbers that will change and you hopefully could be able to finalize it. So at the next meeting, it doesn't seem like you have that many questions lingering, so. Well, I think, I think the good thing is we can show the taxpayers that, you know, that the serviceability in the town seems to be getting better mm -hmm. and that we're being more efficient with our money, which is clearly showing that, you know, we've taken some large deductions and, you know, used yeah. to always be the municipal office was a hot, hot target every year on the budget. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously public works is always going to be a hot tar yeah, target the because it's the budget. biggest part of your budget, you know, so that's going to be the first one that gets attacked. But, yeah. you know, we are, you know, we've cut materials, we've gone to classes, we yeah. are learning how much material we should be putting on our roads and, you know, there should be savings there. And can we can we pick a number, a percent number? Or if we, you know, we were shooting for three cents was the kind of. A, I figured you're shooting for under. You want to be. Know, well, you'd I, like to come I, in just I'd under love to see percent. it. Yeah. That's I mean, we, so if we, we set if we, we set that we number. Be very careful. Yeah. That we're we are suffering and trying to mend a former town manager's level funding. Mm -hmm. It does not work. Mm -hmm. Does not work. 
everything costs more money. So oh, yeah. I, I'm, well, I'm saying, I, I will say I'm against trying to get level fund. Oh yeah. And I think a, a penny or even half a penny is is not enough money to sustain. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go by a, a cent amount, maybe, but maybe if a percentage is, is a more accurate way to go about it. Well, then what, I, what I'm saying is it's, instead of 3.6, we say 3 is the target. So how do we get to 3? So, well, I'll take the... Or... It, it, well, one, we should stick yeah. to cents because mm -hmm. the well, percentages about, don't always... I mean, the cents is what actually comes out of your pocket. The percentages don't line up with cents. Well, so, when I have... I have you know what I mean? Point. Like, your budget's up 5.5%, but that's only... Three and a half cents, you know. Because so, I had three point six four percent, and you said you were about three point six cents, so it's not that we, far. We've off. told well when Carl was on the board, so two and a half, three years ago, three years ago is when we kind of started laying out that roadmap because we had unrealistic budgets. Granted, we had a lot of wasteful spending too, but we had laid out to get to get to fund the town where we should be funding the town that we were going to take this roadmap of, you know, at that time we had said it's probably going to be an increase of 12 or 15 cents, but we're not going to do it in one year or two years. So we had talked about starting to see a gradual increase of three cents a year was kind of the, was the curve we were looking for. I mean, I think, I don't think we need to level fund it, but I, I you know, the good thing is, you know, even retiring, you know, $118,000, Mm -hmm. You know, which is, mm -hmm. if you did level fund it, that's six cents that it should go up, you know. So, I mean, but by rights right now, we should be sitting here going, well, we got six cents for the flood, plus we got three cents for, you know. So, you're really keep, keep, so we should be looking at nine cents, really. I mean, and we're only looking at 3.6. So, so if I mean, you I cut about, if you cut maybe 12 grand out of the budget, or so you'd be at, you'd be under your three cent because if you cut fifteen thousand you're at about two point six cents so if you cut twelve thousand dollars out of the budget and there was three already that I, that we came up with tonight um, so that puts you at nine so if, you know seems like if you were that's kind of the sweet spot is that funds your capital funds and everything mm -hmm. else I mean I just think I guess I would be curious to know what each of the board members think about the storm drains. Because if that's the issue, I don't want to spend staff time applying, running around applying for a grant that we're, you know, maybe as you've said, Chris, it's, you know, mm -hmm. you know it, it wasn't built in a day. I so. mean, just, I, I think it makes sense to do the storm drains while everything else is opened up because it should be more cost effective. Mm -hmm. However, the storm drains is a multi year commitment, it's not a one year. So mm -hmm. it's, we can easily fit it in this year from what I see, mm -hmm. but how is, How's the next four years going to look? Because we're going to be carrying that for four more years. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to cut any more staff. You know, you know I mean, this year you had so, to So, I mean, we're going to be carrying that changes, four cents. I mean, we're going to be carrying that extra two cents forward mm -hmm. for four years. And right. But hopefully we're also not carrying the era forward for the four full years. I mean, it's right. uh, this year and something next year to be determined. But, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I feel like there is a little bit of potential room there. Yeah. Well, but it, could, also, but it could get blown out of the water if we have another event. Sure. You know, yeah. if it's coming April. Be, you know. no, it's tough. Yeah. 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 Or the, the event could, not doing the, the drains could make it that much worse right. because yeah. had we fixed the issue with the drains, mm. we didn't end up with an issue. You know, I could also yeah. talk to um, Rita's back now. So I could talk to her at groups and ask her opinion you know, just to say, look, Rita, what are our odds? You know, could we get more than 20000 we're getting more money for a different road, but it's not coming out of the um, better roads. It's coming from A and R. So I could talk to her and see if there's, you know, is there a funding source that we are not going to be able to get this year that we might be able to get next year, which would cover a bigger portion of the nut. And the other thing too is I'll have a better number from Mike, um, you know, this week too. So. And then I think just, you know, we have 190,000 and for this project, but <clears throat> at. I just have, you know, we don't really have a handle on exactly what that number is. And, and, and you will Is have that number 150000 or is it right. 220000 or... Because as I said, my... And how much savings are we getting by doing it? Exactly. With when the roads opened up versus not, 
Yeah. And we'll find out, yeah, like I said. Bike with no ADIs. Right, because <coughs> it's on your picture. I know, but my picture, if that's $190,000, I'll do it and i get my hand. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mike, like I said, oh we were looking at it. They were busy right. with the water mm -hmm. project. Yeah, we just asked him if he could. I mean, I suspect it. that this. You know, to put those drains in will probably be a lot less than 190,000. Mm -hmm. That's, but I, don't, I mean. And like I said, he was. They're busy with the rest of the water. They're only 90 mm percent. -hmm. He just said, "Look, I'm just going to take an estimate." We had done some work at a different town, and he kind of threw a number at it. Mm -hmm. So now that he's at 90 percent on our plans, he's going to be able to take mm -hmm. a look at it. So who knows? Maybe that number drops significantly. I'm not going to know. Mm -hmm. So. Well, yeah, because if that drops, you know, then either we can, then either we can say. Okay, it's only going to be twenty thousand dollars a year for five years, or forty thousand for two years, or you yeah. know, it's easier to swallow, you know. And then if you if you take that and then you you shave a little bit out of the gravel or whatever, and you get, you know, then you'll be down to three cents or less. Okay. Well, let's well the other thing um, is too, we're going to be doing another increase on the water and sewer, folks, too. Possibly. Yeah. Another four percent. Yeah. See what the one. Well, we'll see. We don't know that right now. We yeah, we know. Are, but we're in a good position with galvanized. Yeah. We don't know what we're, mm -hmm. yeah, we kind of, that's. I mean, I think happen. last year we were 2.99, right? Is that what we were? I think so. What, at the town level? This budget? Last year budget. Um, or the budget we're in right now. <laughs> yeah, you're just. What were you, 2.99 cents you were, or something you like were that? You were, then, because there was some growth in the grant list, you came in even better than that. Yeah. So when you have growth in the grant list, obviously. But that's what the been. voters were looking at when we voted was yeah, it's just, on that budget just the hair under. Sheet. I can't and that was carrying forward the, that was carrying forward the long-term debt, mm -hmm. um, which was, I think, what, eight cents? No, four cents. Yeah, so big. I mean, it was yeah. 80,000. It was a big payment. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, where that budget comparison page is, that's the one we want. Anyway, so I think if you just set that aside, we can... Percent, but what was the cents of oh. the tax rate? Probably, it would have been in the um, Which? page 24 or 5 or whatever that... You know, calculation page that shows Just give them back to you, yeah. Just give them the book. Just give them the book. It's whatever that comes It's all on you, man. So, yeah, I think if we, um, so I'll bring my laptop yeah. next time so that we change some things, we'll instantly see what the number is and we'll go from there. So, and by then we'll have to get some better numbers on the Well, you know, we're pretty good, so we'll have some answers about, I will definitely know more from Mike about the storm. <clears throat> now, if we can just stop having these natural disasters happen, yeah. we'll be we'll be fine. That's your role, right? Yeah. You're in charge of that. <laughs> no, not <natural disasters. laughs> no, no, only no, when no. they happen. Then he takes over. <laughs> when <laughs> he washes his hands of it until it happens. But yeah, I think you were in the. You were definitely in the two something range. Yeah, two point four. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I have another question. I don't know if you know the number or not, but on. Uh, we talked about, we were going to talk about uh, compensation. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about uh, total compensation. Yeah, I did do a, um, the only one I was able to do with all the changes and everything happening this summer was I did the papers and I did their total compensation package and I tried, you know, comparative towns and similar size in their case, more highway budgets, similar um, grand lists, that sort of thing. And they were actually in the, in the we were good. I thought we were good. Um, what happens is a lot of the towns that I was looking at similar were doing the same thing we were, paying 100% premium and and um, their wages were, one thing I don't like all the time about VLCT, they used to be better about how many years you know of, of service someone had, so what someone had been there, 20 years or so some of those columns weren't filled in, but I did end up making some follow-up phone calls to a couple of towns that I felt were similar and they were doing the same thing we were doing, and I felt like the salary compensation-wise was good, so we were actually right in the next little highway. 
So there's only one department. But I, I know. I, 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 we thought it in school forever, and I'm hearing it from people now, is paying 100% of somebody's health care mm -hmm. insurance is the very sore subject. Yeah, and, and that's true. Because it it's not free. I just no, added two, two numbers quickly. And our health care, health insurance premium, is over $150,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And we don't have many employees. Yeah, seems about right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So my, where, I'm, where I'm going with that is, at some point, I think you need, we need to start asking for a little skin in the game. Mm -hmm. Because a family plan is what, 21,000, 22,000? It's, it's less now. Uh, it's over 20,000, I know that. Um, well, the problem, you know, and, and, and we should be looking at, we'll have to look at what the total compensation is because, you know, clearly, you know, I would say at municipal level, your benefits, not always, but your benefits on average are probably better. Yeah. Um, but it usually makes up for the lack of But salary. your pay, you know, I mean, if you have somebody, whatever, if you have someone start on the road crew for $18 an hour, you know, I can tell you that in construction field, you're not going to find anybody for $18 an hour, you know, mm -hmm. you'd have to pay them a lot more than that. But you know? I know, I know, um, I don't they probably can, can attest to this, I know that we have people that work at the school, and that's what I have to go by, what I, what I have for information, that are working for $15, $16 an hour, yeah, yeah. and they're paying 20% of their health care insurance, mm -hmm. yeah. 20%. In a lot of cases, too, they may have come on that way. So you also notice the turnover at the school. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> right? I mean, it too, and it's no different. I mean, if you, I mean, I would say because just being in the industry that if you did that, because, you know, my employer, I have to pay a percentage of my health care. However, I, my wages are much higher than, than, than the public wages would be. Yeah. I mean, I think we would just have to see what do more research on what does that total compensation right. look like. And like I said, I did the road crew, road service, the salary survey for the road crew, mm -hmm. and it was their entire compensation package, and yeah. it was health insurance. And a lot, and, and the towns that I were looking at were doing what we were doing. Wait, but we shouldn't just compare it with other towns. We should probably try to see what, what does a private identity look like for total compensation? Because oh, that's who you're competing it against. Wouldn't be close. You know? yeah. It wouldn't be close. It wouldn't, I mean, you know? it would well, that's what I'm saying. That. You know? Yeah. You, yeah. The, you, yeah. Okay. the other thing, the way, if you want to ta tackle something like this, some ways that you could consider doing it are, because you already have people hired, and we were, you know, and myself, and I was hired with a package. That's how you came in. That's one of the reasons you, maybe you took the job. But what you could do is there's, just like you have done in your personnel policy to kind of stop the big payouts of all the sick time and all those sorts of things. You could say, you know, when someone comes on, maybe that that's different. Maybe that you do pay a, a full of a single or a part of a family or whatever. You could start making adjustments with people as you bring them on. Yeah. But it's gonna be difficult because some of them may require, you know, a bigger salary. It, it, it's just really hard because we all know unemployment is really low right now. And when you're looking for people, it's, 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 I know what it's else, hard you know. going. I can tell you that from looking at the highway. How many yeah. applications and no seeming qualified applicants? Well, I mean, you know, maybe in. And a, we had a stack this big. Maybe in a year or two's time, everybody will be under the health care umbrella and That's we right. don't have to worry about it. Everything's going to be free. That's right. <laughs> and then my great insurance is going to go away. Yeah. All right. Watch TV. There you um, go. So. But it's definitely something we should be Absolutely. looking at and put that out on, you know. Yep. I mean, like I said, I had did one department and, but we. I know in the, again, I'm just getting into the municipal part, but I know in the school, teachers were making $8,000 a year. And they got free health care and it cost $1,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Well, now teachers are making $60,000, $70,000 a year, but health care is $24,000 a year and they're still getting the full benefits. When they got full health care, it didn't cost much and they weren't making much. But now they're making a livable wage. And it's very expensive. And the health care for a truck driver and a truck health care for an English professor are the same dollars. That's what I'm saying. The health care costs just as much money. Mm -hmm. 
That's true. It's obvious. Yeah. It's one of, I mean, I'm sure it's every. It's, it's a big. It's, it's a big dollar. It's, it's one hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars, and I just took two numbers out of it. Yeah. There's it's, more than that in there. Yeah. It's, well, health healthcare outpaces, you oh, know, God, yeah. wage 14%. inflation by. I mean, 14%. you know. It's outpacing right. it by four to five times, so you're never going to catch it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get on Medicare, you still got to pay money to have your health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It ain't free. I just started writing checks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I know. I, I you know on that we can talk more, but I know like it, a, a lot of the private businesses are doing now is you know if you come on and you're a single person, you know then they'll pay 100% of your single person. And if you add your family to that, then, then they pay like 80% of that or, you know, a percentage of yeah. that. And then that's how they pay in to that system. But It's know, always hard. You know, yeah. I think that there's so many different we've ways done this for, you know, for years, had the same conversation with different towns. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's always you're trying to make something equitable that's not. And, mm -hmm. and that's when you have people that take it that don't. And, and it's all mm -hmm. that. I know for a while, it can be like, Mo may have been on the board when that happened, but none of the rest of you weren't. But when municipalities, when the first exchange was going to come out, and we were so excited, Mister, we thought hot dog, we would cancel our insurance, we're going to kick everybody into the exchange, and we were thinking all this yeah. money we could save, and way. you know, but it was going to be great. And then they're like, yeah, no, you can't go into the exchange because you're a municipality. Mm. So they wouldn't even let us in, mm. and because um, we were like, sweet, this is going to be a great boom for us, and but. Problem we have is as long as unemployment is at a low rate like it is, yeah, like you know the time that we should be looking at co total compensations is when unemployment goes back to you know five, six, seven percent because yeah. then you have a bigger market. Because right now, I mean, employers are tripping over you know any any available employee yeah. to get them on. They were paying them whatever. Like twenty four to twenty six thousand to drive a fuel truck plus a five thousand dollar sign on bonus. Just for season. I can't yeah. I can't even compete with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But but that you know, that's mm -hmm. that's what the market is, you know. Yeah. That's true. So well, that, that that's a German or No, no, I'm just saying. Why you want he might not have been on <laughs> you Nancy over there? there? Got a hot day, hot truck. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the listers. I understand. Yeah, I know. I have to bring up. So we had a couple of um, we had well, we have two resignation letters. You know, as we've been talking about the listers office, it sounds like that all three listers are going to be either off or will be off between now and um, town meeting day. Right. Um, as Roberta. So the first one we had from Roberta Carrier, which is um, her letter of resignation effective the 3rd of December, which has passed. Um, and then the second one <coughs> will be for Jim Gray, um, who will be terminating his employment as Lister effective 12-31-19. So we're going to be before any reappointments, we'll be down two listers going into town meeting, which technically will be down three because, mm -hmm. you know, there's one more to, to do it. So, um, which puts our town in a kind of a tough spot. Um, but, uh, so I would, I would entertain a motion to accept the resignations of Roberta Carrier Effective 12 3 2019 and Jim Gray effective 12 31 19. So okay, all in favor? And then on the flip side of things, I gotta include myself in this one. Our Savior and Grace. <laughs> You're just trying to get her out of the house. Uh, I was just trying to find her. <laughs> Did you get a. Was there a letter? Uh, no. There wasn't a previous no, it was packet. Just in, oh, it wasn't, oh, it was in the last packet? No. Mm -hmm. I didn't saw, saw yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. We pointed to staff. We pointed to staff. Last year you didn't do anything. I hired her. As, oh, right. as staff. So that was their staff. Yeah. Yeah. But now that you have an opening, you can appoint Judy 
to be a lister, mm -hmm. and then in March she will run she for run. the balance of Roberta's seat, or she could run for the full three years of Louise's seat. So I guess she will take her pick. Well, I was going to say at this point, which if we're going to a point, which position are we appointing for? Are we appointing for Roberta's you're position or Jim Gray's position? You're appointing her for Roberta's because it's the only one currently open, open. Yeah. So you just appoint, so basically you're appointing whoever, you're appointing oh, right. until March, yeah. doesn't matter anyway. You're just You're still appointing there. her until the March <coughs> town meeting, this March, March So technically she would, be, is, when's Roberta's up? I have no idea. 2021. 2021. She had two years left, right? So she would carry, so Judith, if that happened, she would carry out that remainder of that appointment. Not necessarily, because you only have the ability to appoint her until the, until the, the most, until the 2020 election. At that time, she could run for the balance of Roberta's seat, or okay. she could run for all of. All right, got it. Uh, or one of the other ones. Yeah. Louise's. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I would entertain a motion to appoint Judith Bingham Brigham to Lister. Second. So effective. Uh, when would the effective date be? Effective now. So twelve nine two thousand nineteen. Until town yeah March twenty twenty until town meeting twenty twenty. Okay, we have a second. Second. Okay, all in yep. favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations. Ready? I just walked all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we almost got all of you. You can be really popular. Yeah, right now, don't say anything. You'll be able to do some sneak attacks. And <laughs> <figure it out>. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, we have the hazard mitigation assistance certificate. Which I don't, I didn't see anything in my packet. Mm -hmm. Just this. Yeah, right oh, okay, yeah, that was, was on the back. Well, mine was double printed, so I. It was saying, yeah, if awarded. Um, so we're going to partner with the state. It was on the back of something, I don't know what it is. So we'll partner with the state on a grant application. And so okay. if it's awarded, um, they'll get us financial, we'll get financial assistance to update our hazard mitigation plan. Uh, our, <coughs> um, expires in 2021, so. <coughs> All right. Mm -hmm. so that's always a good thing. Yeah. So you either need to make a motion to authorize uh, the select board chair or myself. Only it's only has the money for one signature. Yeah. There we go. So uh, I would entertain a motion to accept the town manager to sign on behalf of us <laughs> for the hazard mitigation assistance certificate. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And town manager's report. Well, um. <coughs> okay. So just giving you ideas, just letting you know that Kelly's working on the town report. Mm -hmm. um, we called the school because that was a debacle last year to let them right. know what our deadline for printing is, and we're not waiting, so mm -hmm. either get it done or print your own. Um, so um, the BRI meeting is tomorrow night, and um, so I'm going to attend that. I'm excited to do that, meet everybody there. Uh, FEMA, we're, you know, obviously it takes a lot of time. We've got projects submitted, so we already um, received money, receiving money back for the um, debris removal project, so that's good news. Um, so we're starting to see our money back. I did follow up on our the money, 500, 600,000 that we're waiting for. Federal highways, we're doing Camp Brook Road, that all went through, so um, that's been submitted as well, so we should be seeing that money, mm -hmm. which will go directly to Mascoma to pay for the draw. Um, so that's 591,929, as I said. Uh, Dubois and King started working on the Peavine slide. They provided us with a traffic plan. Um, Alan is borrowing some Jersey barriers from the state. Again, thank you to Ryan Slack for offering that. So, and I already told the fire chief too, that Peavine, that's part of, is gonna be one lane in an area where the slide is because if somebody goes off, they're going off. So um, that was part of their um, package and was to do a traffic plan. So they've done that. Mm -hmm. So getting that taken care of, so that would be nice. Um, 
So Dietrich and I are working with CompuCount. It's a lot to get all the stuff uh, together. So we've been working on that big spreadsheet and emailing back and forth, giving them the information that they want. Um, I have not uh, had a chance yet to read the town of Rochester just approved a class four. I think it was Paul maybe who mentioned that to me. So I got a hold of Joan and she was happy to share it with me. Uh, Sullivan Power is working on our financial statements. They're going to come back to finish the transfer stations audit and clean up a couple things, um, but I don't know when exactly Rick hasn't said yet, but um, I was emailing with Sarah LaCroix today. Um, and I said Fire Chief was able to get fan, um, samples of the insulation and attic, so we, that's already been sent in, I told you that. Um, sent Bob Haynes a letter of support that he requested um, for the GW Plastics project. Um, you got the marked up photos for the storm drains. And then, yeah, somebody was concerned about how the salt was being spread on the sidewalks. So I included, I passed around, did you all see the picture? Mm -hmm. So that way you could see, it wasn't going willy nilly up, you know, everywhere it is being focused right there. I talked to um, Morgan a little bit about it. And he said in one area, he is, in most areas he's not driving on the sidewalk. In this area he is, because um, obviously that was the picture that you had, but it's not, you know, you could tell by the spray, I thought the picture actually came out great because it could tell that it's not going everywhere. It's really kind of sticking where it needs to be. So um, so that's why I brought you in the original because the copy was way too dark. You couldn't see it. So this week we have, so select board meeting, BRI, um, FEMA is coming in, meeting with them, um, trying to get Oscar to come in to meet with him to see what we're gonna be doing there. Um, just working on finishing up with CompuCount to get those documents um, to them, trying to finish some stuff with the audit, and also just trying to work on you know, some of the finances. Obviously, a D-Tree starter, um, and it's been a nice addition, and right now she's gonna be off on a couple Tuesdays and working Fridays, but once she sugars it out, I think she's gonna be working Monday through Thursday, which is great. Always already been able to give her grant stuff, like for the one for the downtown. Um, she's been doing that. She's been working uh, with Dave and with Anne and on, their, on the sheets, the insurance stuff. We had a lot of insurance things hanging out there that we had not tackled. And is it, is it MSDS sheets? Is that, do I have the right initials? No, no that's what they're used to. No, that's it. I'm shaking that's my head. Is, yeah. it's a waste of government money. Yeah, so we're working on that process too to mm -hmm. make sure that everybody has a updated you know, mm -hmm. policy, and then we're gonna get everybody together. We have some training, we have bloodborne pathogen one, we have PPE, and because what happens if we don't adhere to all this stuff that the LCT points out our deficiencies, then you can't qualify for the you know grant money that they have. So I'm just trying to focus on cleaning up a bunch of older stuff. Um, also speaking of that, we're gonna be hoeing out the office. We have some issues with um, access and things like that are gonna be taken care of hopefully when the road crew gets I'm going to use a couple of guys for a few hours to get some stuff cleaned up there. Um, so I'm just trying to mm -hmm. hoe out, clean out, and catch up. <laughs> so all, at the, all at the same time. And have we heard any um, feedback in regards to the um, trash yes. ordinance? I have heard piece? a little bit. I'm hoping for something in writing because I've talked to a couple people about it um, coming in. And it seems to me the impression that I have so far from the limited people that I've spoken with, that they are in favor of trash, but that is it. They're not in favor of the vehicles or collection of any anything else. They understood my point as far as being a tax collector and trying to get some properties cleaned up. They were completely on board with that. They understand that, but they, the people that I talked to felt that garbage was garbage that should be cleaned up, that should not be property, but when we started looking at vehicles, how many registered or unregistered vehicles or campers or whatever, they felt that was, I don't know, an inch too far, I guess. So when is our, when's our deadline to have that? Is it the end of, the, end of this month that we have to have it ready? I would think ready? you would have, uh, to Or first week in morning. January Probably or something? Probably first week in January, so. So it's not much, we only have couple you know, like meeting two, maybe two maybe yeah. two at the most yeah because you signed the warning so so know, we'll have that for the next meeting to you, you know, kind of make a decision on i guess or? what do you want to do i mean i can 
I have asked people, anyone who's come in to adopt a policy, I have spoken with them, asked them to bring me back something in writing, what do you like, if you don't, you know, if you only like three things, circle them. Mm -hmm. But I have got nothing back from anybody um, that I had spoken to. I know there was some talk, um, you know, some people were really upset about it, um, but feeling we were targeting them, and you know, we're not targeting anybody, we're just trying to get some things um, taken care of. So. I don't know what the board has heard. Uh, maybe you're hearing a lot of pushback that it's not going to pass. Maybe we need to just scale it back so it's strictly trash. Well, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I think at this point, you know, if we move forward with what we have, you know, it goes to the voters, and if they vote it down, then we can retool it to just trash, or or we could chop it all out and just approach it with just trash and. You know, go from there. I mean, I guess. Have you heard anything, Mom? Have you had? I haven't heard anything, anything, but I, you know, if it's just not much trash, and, and I guess everybody can have 15, 20 cars back to rent. Mm -hmm. The only I've I've heard from probably four. I want to say four or five people, and the ones that don't like it are the ones who feel that they're being targeted. And they might be the ones that should be. Yeah, targeted. but the other yeah, folks. Junk, I'm sorry. But the other folks are saying, "Hooray, hurrah! We need to clean up some of this stuff." But how is it going to get passed at town meeting? You know, you got to make it palatable. Well, okay, can we a little more palatable? I have heard, words. and I will say, I have heard a lot. I have heard from more people in favor than I have opposed. Right. For sure, well, I've true. had some people can come we, out um, and said it's about time. Can we put it on the agenda for next time? Next time, and maybe make a little bigger thing about it. I mean, yeah. did we, did we already have an informational is? meeting on that? No, we still have not decided what next time is. <laughs> we have to decide <laughs> did, we, did we have an informational meeting on that? Wait. I'm sorry, what? We didn't have an informational meeting on that potential No, ordinance. no, you said it put out on the website. And no, we we did, so, and from, and so for the for the next. Select board meeting. Would it be yeah. best for us to, like we did tonight with the budget, should we do a sure. trash ordinance yes. informational meeting, and then yeah. we can get back maybe some feedback and decide what version we want to push forward? Or yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry, Dave. What was your question? I thought there was a state statute about how many how many unregistered vehicles you could have in your There is just two cars. But I'm not sure how that works because is that only if you cover in your zoning because. Your zoning doesn't, but a have in town where the zoning will say, like, if you're in the village, you can only have two cars, but if you're out, you could have three. So, um, yeah, I don't know. but you said statute, you think it's in the I think, statute? I think it becomes, like, enforcement, you know, on how it, you know. It's a big thing right there. I mean, even with the trash, you got to enforce it. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously all, because once we get some things taken care of at the at level, and I get caught up, D3 gets trained, we get, you know, we get some time behind us. We got behind the eight ball. You were looking at, you know, we had it was a tough summer. Mm -hmm. okay. But it would be nice yeah. to do that because that is my plan is I will do zoning enforcement and going and making sure that when you get a permit, I am going to come and look at it, make sure you feel the like <laughs> that you would. So well, it's, we, nobody's done that since we started zoning. I know, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah. Is that, otherwise, zoning is why well, nothing. Well, yeah. yeah, so we definitely need to do that. Okay. So, um, and I think that was in the ordinance. So I think you're right. I think doing informational because at this point I have heard way more positive than negatives, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the well, people that I had asked to bring us back. Well, to see if we can them. make sure that it's well advertised. And, sure. Um, and, yeah. then, and then we'll, I guess, as a board, we'll come prepared to take uh, some sort of action to push it forward. Or at least not. they'll put it in the newspaper. That'll get them. <laughs> Everybody needs this. Yeah. So. Headline, front page, Bethel to enforce <laughs> ordinance, trash ordinance. <laughs> It'll be st standing room only. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, last, the last select board meeting, it went all the way through except for it stopped. Mm -hmm. And then there was something more that wasn't yeah, even yeah, there. That's right. There's right. a whole, yeah. You know, I didn't notice that. Somebody else pointed it out to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, reading and along and all of a sudden, where did it go? go? It's where all done. Go? That was the end of it. Uh, they've cut her down on so many words she can publish. Yeah, yeah and I out. haven't compared how much they've cut out. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Select board meeting minutes from the 25th oh. of November. Are we going to say what our next meeting is? I, I hope yeah, we, we could do that under 
Other business? Other business. Yeah. Any, yeah. Anything on the meeting minutes? No. Nope. Good. Okay, I entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes from November 25th. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Second. Aye. Second. All right. Everybody had a chance to look through the other communications that were in there? Yeah. Any questions in regards to them? I don't think the ice will cure very well tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I we know. need help. Yeah. I know. They did such a I was just waiting, just waiting for somebody to go out there and walk in it and then, you know. Just I, like fresh concrete. I took my daughters <laughs> over there to see it the other day and, you know, I was like, you, know, you can't go on it, but you can, you know, feel the ice. You know. <laughs> The ice rink, they the flooded it. The ice rink is in, yeah. Oh, they're having like a grand opening. Next week. Next. Saturday. 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 This Saturday. Oh, I meant to ask him, because this Saturday, what, what do you it's know? We know when? Actually, Wednesday we know what time? It's to start getting yeah, it's here. It's in here. It didn't say what time, though. I'm looking at it here. It just said during the day. We've got the Project Happy Holidays on Saturday, so there's going to be 50 families coming in to pick up food and clothing and stuff. Okay. Oh, no, I don't know. I'm not. If she, she probably said the time, but I'll ask her. Um, she won't be in tomorrow. Where's the happy holidays? Huh? Happy holidays at school? No, it's at the White Church. Oh. At what time? From nine until eleven okay. on Saturday. Nine a.m. to eleven. But there'll be fifty in theory. Okay. Well, I can drop off my mitten stuff directly to you guys at the White Church on Friday, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, right. I'll let her know um, that and find out. And so in that vein, I mean, obviously you owe a huge thank you to everyone who participated that day, plus yeah. Chuck and Michelle Washburn. It looks like they donated all the material to do the um, outer edge of it. Plus they also had this metal bent to, to go to like over the liner along the edges. On, mm -hmm. Dave was there, mm -hmm. Deitri was there. Um, who else was, was with you? Eric, Jason, Balfini. So how, there was quite a crew. How, yes. will, how will they um, protect the edges of that? Will there be, how will he, people get in and out? They made a wood frame. Yeah, that's and we put the liner on it, and then he had a metal bent and all hem that goes over the wood and down into the ice. Yeah, so that. All the liners protected all the way around. But from people getting from, say, the parking lot, Onto the ice itself, is there going to be any type of like step or step snow bank or step over you know, the board? Yeah, no, I just didn't know how we that was going to be. Trying to get the town to, when they plow it, leave a snow bank, leave a windrow on material the, there on that side, just more so if they're at playing hockey or messing mm -hmm. around, and something doesn't go into cars parking along. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I think too, we're not we're not sure right now whether it's going to be lit. You know, either this year or we're, we're just kind of waiting and seeing. Yeah. And, and and you know what? It's it's fine. This is the first time we're at it, and and um, if it can be lit, great. We have permission. If it can't, then that's fine too. That you know, people yes. donating. And it was a lot of time. It was cold. It was wet. It, so I just really appreciate what you guys did. People used to use the kerosene lanterns when they went ice skating. There you go. Yeah. Now they can use their uh, flashlight on their iPhone. <laughs> Be all set, right? Yes, we'll have to plug it in we'll give them all headlamps. And yeah. so, um, so anyway, so a big thank you to everybody who who you know helped with that project. And I know that uh, Chuck and Michelle certainly paid for all the materials to outline and went in and did it and had all that metal bent. And it was just really great of them to do that. So. Um, so the other thing under other business, speaking of hoeing out, I was, I've talked to the employees, some of them at that office, a couple of highway workers. You may not know this, but in the garage attachment of the town building, there is a ton of the old chairs from this building, and the basement is half full of them. And a couple times a year, somebody comes for a wedding, and they go and hoe them out of the basement, and they borrow them and then bring them back. But I think that it would be nice to offer them up to residents if people want them, they could come and get them. Um, to keep some, maybe, and we just we need to get rid of them. The just, school might even take some more. Yeah, the ones they've had are starting to get a little bit beat up just because they're in the hallways. And yeah. somebody actually asked me if I could repair one of the seats, and I said, no 
just go get a new one. Yeah, absolutely. So, There's a so those are the same chairs that the <coughs> that the students had painted and stuff. Yeah, they're the, the sets ago. of four. That yeah, the yeah. Don't see. There's so, a ton of them. I mean, I the garage know. is half are more full. Huh? No. More no. 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 Way. no. no. And so it just seems like it might be nice to offer them to the residents to try to get rid of them if they want them, come and get them, and. And well, you could probably go take a few of them down by the ice rink and put them down there so the people have places to sit. They'll probably get down. Oh, in the pavilion. Oh, in the gazebo. Yeah, either put them on the side of the ice. Some up above and put them down in the pavilion. Yeah. That was the talk the other day. Oh, there you go. I'll talk to Dietrich, but certainly. Might be able to get rid of a couple of benches over there. Yeah. And I mean, they're hordes of yeah. those things downstairs. We had, we had to leave a path because that was one of the other violations that we had. There were just so many. And they're just, they're just, you know, just fold up chairs? Yeah, they're the they're the they're attached. I assume they were in your hall originally. That that they they're the um, wooden ones and the seat folds down and, and there's three maybe four hooked together. Yeah, three and two. Oh, yeah, but yeah, you could uh, see, but make some They're just rotting in the basement and out in the garage. Yeah. It seems like if there's somebody out there that could get some use of them, or maybe, you know, residents come and get them. And if only we knew somebody likes to work with wood. No. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. No. Not ringing a bell? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put okay. them out there and see who wants them. They can come and get yeah, them. Yeah, take a look at them. And well, there's trust me, there's tons. So um, we we could probably give one to every resident in town. So um, I'll have her let know that we can go ahead and move those out. So be nice. We could actually uh, down there. So and then um, and then date for our next meeting. We're looking at I don't know. I mean, right now we're scheduled for the twenty third, which is right. Monday. But a couple people. One person had a conflict, a couple of people had to check their schedules. I think you needed to know if you yeah. had basketball games. Somebody else was double checking their plans. Lindley was not I'm, here on the 23rd. I'm not here. I could call in, but I'm yeah. out of town. So. Don't matter to me. Well, right now, we're looking at leaving on the morning of Tuesday. 24th? Yeah. Uh, about whether the weather might be a factor, we don't know at that yeah. point. And if so, we do, so we, we may go. Move it to next week? We may go earlier. The 16th. What about you, Dave? I'm good. I'm leaving the day after Christmas. Yeah. I mean, I'm good the 23rd. I'm not good the 30th. How about the 16th? I mean, we can have next week. The only thing the next week is we'll be too soon to get. It's going to be a lot. To get everything that we want on the agenda. Uh, because, because looking at it, I mean, we are only going to have. Because the next meet, the next one after that won't be until the thirteenth, which I think by then. You could do it the sixteenth. I mean, you could split the difference if you do it the sixteenth. Um, that gives us. Chris was saying it was too soon to. The sixth. Oh, I was. Oh, I'm thinking yeah. next week is. Oh, that's right. Fine. Yeah, it'd be next Monday. I'm, mm. Yeah, no, forget it. I'm thinking. I mean, do we want to just stick with the twenty third and? Yeah, that can call it. I mean, I would say at this point, I mean, the biggest thing would be. Going through the potential uh, trash ordinance would be the and budget. Yeah, and the budget. 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 We'll try to do is just not make any appointments like we did tonight. Yeah. No appointments. I'll try to shoot for that. Keep it so okay. that it's just that. If you do the trash ordinance, mm -hmm. um, you know, I will say that if you get a big turnout, you're you're probably going to have to limit people to speaking for you know a couple three minutes and to not you're going to have to limit the. I mean, it, uh, it's usually a packed house in there, so I. You know. <laughs> no, I'm saying if it is, Can I mean I. Can we push the trash ordinance back until January? Well, not if you're going to put it on the morning. Right. Because yeah, I think the, that's what we're looking at is the 13th okay. of January is our next meeting after that, and I think I think we have to have everything in. Absolutely. If it's not the 13th, it's before that. Yeah. Anything so I don't even know if you'll be able to get to the 13th. We may have to do a special meeting. I can't remember when we signed last year, but um, so anyways, I'll look at the schedule for that to see when the warning. But it makes sense to do it then on the 23rd, and and um, I'll put for the sign the warning date question mark. And then and the other thing for the next meeting to be thinking of is dedication. Dedication, for the, yeah. I have a couple. We have a couple ideas for you to think about, and I'll let you know what those are. And then, but and then to Lindley gave this out. Yeah, I wanted to just do a quick update. Um, so, if you remember a couple of meetings ago, we had uh, Josh Jerome, who's the economic development um, person for the town of Randolph, is sort of leading 
a consortium of towns um, on this grant application. So this first round, this is going in uh, this week. This is for the $15,000 towards a planning grant that is, uh, if we were to get the second grant, it's 300,000. And um, so the idea that the consortium has come up with is sort of on this sheet and it's that infographic is actually sort of the quickest way to really grab the information. So from our planning meetings, uh, these were the heavy hitter topics that every single town was facing. So it's um, housing stability, education, health and well-being, mobility, and economic security. And so the idea is if we were given the $15,000 grant, we would use it to explore these five topics to really see how a $300,000 grant could be used for this region and for these surrounding towns um, to really help and benefit. Uh, so, it, so the idea with this grant is really just the $15,000 for its planning. Uh, Josh Durham is really leading this front, but there are, I believe it's six um, representatives. So Bethel will have one representative. It's still sort of being debated who that's going to be, uh, but we will have a representative on this team if we're given this grant and we'll go from there. And so what Josh was asking was not only that I update the board with where things are and what's what's going to get submitted for this grant, but if the board is willing, this is a non-binding resolution um, that just sort of says that the, the select board from the town is on board with the grant being submitted, that we're aware of it, that we're backing it, that sort of thing. Um, so it's nothing Nothing that we're held to other than it makes the grant application that much stronger. And um, I know I know that Randolph's and I think it's Brookfield's have definitely signed them and others are being asked. So. Do you have a time frame in which to sign that? Does it have the grant's be? going in on the 13th, so it's tonight's meeting. Yeah. Okay. And I can read it quickly if everybody wanted to hear what's on it. It's not very long. That'd be good. Okay. So the Select Board of Bethel hereby is it signifies their desire for the Town of Randolph to apply for the Working Communities Challenge Grant from the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston jointly with the communities of Randolph, Braintree, Brookfield, Chelsea, Rochester, and Bethel, further known as the White River Valley Consortium. Whereas the White River Valley Consortium intends to work towards the vision and goals of the Working Communities Challenge to support local leaders from public, nonprofit, and private sectors working together to achieve Ambitious, ambitious shared goals, economic inclusion, racial equality, and diverse across age, gender, and sexual orientation as important goals of the important parts of the shared goal, meaningful engagement of diverse set of residents, including those with low incomes in decision making and direction setting, system solutions, not just programs to achieve the team's shared goals, connections to ideas, people, and markets within and outside the local economies and communities and learning and adaptation through research, community input, and peer-to-peer -peer exchange. So it's basically that's encapsulating what's in this sheet. And yeah. this sheet gives you a bit more information as to the exact grant application. Which is kind of the same thing that they talked about when Rebecca and Josh came before. Yeah. And, and um, so you would, um, if you're going to do that, Chris, you need a motion to. Mm. Yeah. No, I was just looking through the bottom of like the current team, you know, which was, you know, the towns plus the organizations, and I guess I was a little. Has anybody approached um, GW on being part of the team, or not as part of the I mean, team? Being that they have such a large footprint in the communities, not not quite as part of the team, but they will definitely be. There's a whole list of. Because yeah, at first I was looking, it was, you know, Central Vermont, this and that, but then there's like Bar Harbor, Bank and Trust, you know, so then I'm thinking, you know, I mean, GW probably <coughs> invests the most of any right. company and in I the area. The, the idea is to get as wide of a swath of involvement as possible. Yeah. I was just trying to think any other Bethel related things that I may, you know, should be on there, but, you know, I mean. So, I don't know, I mean, what does the board feel? I make a motion that we, that we sign on to the uh, letter, support letter. Second. 
Okay, all in favor? All right. Any other business to come before the board? Or are we good? Anything else? Anybody have anything? I move we adjourn. Okay. Mm -hmm.